when you make it your prayer. Na <laughs> O Yesu kukufuka na kukufuka komzi ba e kuveni na bubu miyobu kuna pakade a. Fuga comsi va e guveni mnandi kukuvuka ndibubomi kokholwa yokum nokuba efile odla ubomi noko nakukuvuka i am the life i am the resurrection he who dies in the Lord shall rise again. Paga de. I am the life. I am the resurrection. He who dies in the Lord shall rise again. Guveni. Na bubu mi obu kuna paga de ah na di koko fuka di bubu obu mi kolo ayokum nokuba efile wosha obu mi no kuveni na. Bubo mi obu kuna paga de a mna di koko fuka nokuba ubo okolo ayokum nokuba ati afe oku fuka wakon 
Uveni na bubomi obunkuna paga de I am the life. I am the truth. He who dies in the Lord shall rise again. Kufuka, Dibu Bomi, Okolwa Yokum, Nokuba, a file, Wosa, Ubo, Nago Kufuka, Nago Kufuka, Komsi, Ba, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, Bomi. I am the life, the truth. He who dies in me shall rise again. There is resurrection to those who die in the Lord. She shall rise again. She shall rise again. Yes, Lord. I am the life. I am the resurrection. He who dies in the Lord shall live again. Our sister shall live again. We shall live again. Thank you, Jesus. Sitele, program directors and a family as a leader of the cons. They come and go see us. Kwa 
We want to extend our greetings to, we may be seated. We want to extend our greetings to the family, all the families involved. We want to extend our greetings to the pastors. First of all, the host here, Apostle John Mabecha, together with all the pastors from different denominations, we want to extend our greetings to the friends of this particular family, distinguished guests, be greeted this morning in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We want to greet all the mothers. We want to greet all the fathers, the youth and the Sunday school in Jesus' name. Amen. It is a privilege and an honor for us to gather even in this morning. For the Bible, the word of God says, that his mercies are new every morning. Even in this morning, we know that there is a new dispensation of the mercies of God that have just been made available for us for this morning. My name is Siam Tanda Nokanta. I will be one of your program directors for this morning. Because of time, our program is going to start exactly at 10 o'clock. Let us quickly turn our Bibles to the book of Psalm 90. Psalm 90. We are going to read the psalm, and after we have read the psalm, we are going to take a hymn. I believe that my worship team is ready. We can take hymn number 81. Nzulu ye mfilakalo, nzulu ye simanga, ezali sumshaba nesipaga paga. Immediately after that, we are going to welcome Reverend Gom, who is going to come and open this particular session with a word of prayer. Psalms 90, wait, Psalm 90, sorry. We are going to read Psalm 90, and after that, we are going to get to Nzulu and Fishlagalo. I'm really sorry. A prayer of Moses, the man of God. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you had formed the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting you are God. You return men to dust, and say you return, O children of men, for a thousand years in your sight are but as yesterday when it is past, or as you watch in the light, in the night. You sweep them away as with a flood. They are like a dream, like grass that is renewed in the morning. In the morning it flourishes and it is renewed. In the evening it fades and withers. For we are brought to an end by your anger. By your wrath we are dismayed. You have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins in the light of your presence. For all our days pass away under your wrath. We bring our years to an end like a sigh. The year of our life are 70, or even by reason of strength, 80. Yet their span is but toil and trouble. They are soon gone, and we fly away. Who considers the power of your anger and your wrath according to the fear of you? So teach us to number our days, that we may get a heart of wisdom. Return, O Lord, how long have 
How long have pity on your servants? Satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Make us glad for as many days as you have afflicted us, and for as many years as we have seen evil. Let your work be shown to your servants, and your glorious power to their children. Let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us, and establish the work of our hands upon us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. We stand as we welcome Reverend Gom. Zulu, yem fisaga, lo Zulu, yes fisaga, ga esa ni se usa. we close our eyes. Our Heavenly Father, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, church may we declare Jesus. Come on, church may we declare Jesus. As per your invitation in the book of Matthew chapter 11, verse 23, that come to me all those that are heavenly laden. Yehovah, we know the funny. Ufuna banda bane packages. Ufuna bantu kosaba limele. As in the woman with the issues of blood, we are touching the hem of your garment. And as sure as the sun rises from the east to the west, so your word, as according to Isaiah 55, verse 11, will never come out of your mouth and be devoid of power. Your word is powerful. Father, though you are omniscient, though you are omnipotent, Father, we invite you, for you want our consent, for you said, if the two gather in my name, I am amongst their midst. Lord, we are gathering here in your name. It is your name that pronounced this demon in the book of Genesis, Lord, chapter 3, the fall of men, when you said, if you eat in the tree, you shall surely die. 
Lord, we are the casualties of this demon. Lord, we are looted by this demon. Lord, this demon cuts across all levels of society, rich and poor, ignorant and wise alike. Animals and plants, they are subjected, even the very earth that we occupy, Father, is subjected into this demon. We draw solace, Lord, from the words see, that were spoken by St. Paul. Lord, in the book of 1 Corinthians 15, verse 26, that the last enemy, the last enemy, death shall die one day. Death shall die in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We draw sorrows from Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ died, and Jesus Christ rose from the dead. And we believe that our beloved sisters remain, shall rise. That we Holy Spirit brood. Holy Spirit suffer. Holy Spirit peace. Holy Spirit anoint each and every speaker so that Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 can be realized. We thank you for your presence and your brooding, your comfort, your peace, your strength, and your power of resurrection in Jesus Christ, mighty name of Nazareth. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our For thine is thy kingdom, thy power and thy glory for Hallelujah, 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 yes, for thine, for thine. Thy power, thy power, yeah. forever, forever. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, for thine, for thine is. Thy power, thy power, 
forever, forever. If we can just join on this song this morning as we're about to proceed with this program. If you can stand wherever you are and begin to worship God who is already in this place this morning. Hallelujah. Thy power, thy power, thy glory and thy forever, forever. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy, holy name. I will bless the Lord. Both the 
Zaka Gambia and Johannesburg, South Africa, died on October 11, 2023, at the age of 62 after a long illness. Squash was born in Danzani, NUN, on the 1st of March, 1962, to Belton and Mersingeni. She was the fourth born, but the first to live beyond a few days, and was thus named Nogwanda. She started a schooling career in Nonsegelelo Primary School and matriculated in Zomtla High School, both in Tanzania, East London. She graduated from the University of Forte in 1983 with a BCom degree and worked at Tech Electronics, Aiken and Beat, Wayman Mayenau, and the SA Black uh, Taxi Association before landing at ESCOM in 1991. She left for New York for a learnership program with IBM in 1994 and then returned back to ESCOM. She would spend north of two decades in ESCOM, starting off as a management accountant and growing to the point of managing director at ESCOM Uganda. After spending 12 and a half years in Uganda, she returned to South Africa. She spent a year at Megawatt Park before moving to the East and Southern African Association of Accountants Generals. She spent five years with ISAC, now Triple AG, developing the business model as technical director and then acting CEO for the transition into Tipu AG. Nukwanda was a, devote, a devoted mother and a faithful servant of the kingdom, the kingdom of God, sorry. She lived to serve in every environment she was in. At work, she mentored many young people, seeing potential in all of them, pushing them to be the very best of themselves and helping them add value to the company. In the golfing community, she helped young people further their dreams through study and golfing support some now being professional golfers. In every church she joined with a constant moving, she sought to be an active member and contribute in whatever way the Lord asked of her. Service was indeed the centerpiece of her life. Nogwanda loved the Lord with all of her heart, with all of her soul, and with all her mind. She would quote the scripture, deep calls unto deep. She lived to be in the depths of the ocean that is his will and in his presence where you are at the complete mercy of the seas, where there is no option of swimming, only surrender. Rest is now in the deep. Squash is survived by her children. Siwe. Sita, Tzika, Mokhadi, Baliso, Olupiwe, and her granddaughter, Inati. Her siblings, she is predeceased by her niece, Sandisiwe, her brother, Binky, and her parents, Belton and Mercy Mgeni. Squash has missed Bukhadi's hope. Squash has missed Bukhadi's Hippocratic Oath as a medical doctor by seven weeks. She pre-celebrated her daughter in advance on the blue train to Cape Town, then Dubai, Singapore, Malaysia, Abu Dhabi last December. So I thank you. Thank you, thank you.
Hallelujah. It is well with our soul. Even at this point in our lives, we still say, The Lord is good and His mercy is endured forever. Hallelujah. Before we proceed with the program, we just want to get Uprof Mlisana to come and say a welcome note to everyone that is here. And immediately after that, we are going to proceed with the program. Can we get a song from the praise team welcoming Prof. Mlisana to do a welcoming in the name of Jesus? Long shengi ungu bamina Uche sae kongunye take this opportunity and greet the family Yawamdeni. All is Shobon as a Lamani, friends and uh, the rest of the body of Christ. Greeting as well the men who are called by the Lord to minister to us. The pastors from different churches and we really just want to greet you in the wonderful and precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Um, it is a privilege to be asked by our Apostle Senior Pastor John Mabecha to just um, on behalf of the church, Sentinel G, where we believe it is the house of refuge that God has called us unto, to welcome everybody this morning. It is not a good morning, it is not a happy morning, but it is a blessed morning because it is the day that the Lord has made. And the Bible says, we shall therefore rejoice and be glad in it. The Bible says rejoice always, and again I say rejoice. It does not specify when to rejoice, but it says always, which means it doesn't matter what the environment feels like, it doesn't matter what the circumstances are, but we are asked and ordered by God to rejoice because he is all-knowing. He is a God who 
there's not a single thing that misses him, but he knows it all. So really, as a church, we want to say we are with you as a family, and we really just want to celebrate the great life that our sister seems to have played, because each and every one of you have testified to the goodness of the Lord in her life. And therefore, let's take this moment and just come before the Lord and rejoice for the life that God has given us through her and every blessing that she has been, knowing that even tomorrow, the Lord will show us how to move forward. So we really just want to welcome you, and we're praying and trusting that whatever word is going to be spoken here, it shall be able to comfort you, because it comes from the Holy Spirit, and everyone who is here will be ministered unto, because we know that we serve a God that speaks, we serve a God that comforts, we serve a God who is able to bind any pain. He says he is closer he actually becomes the one closer even than a brother. So even this service, we are looking forward to a time where the Lord will comfort all of us. May the good Lord bless you. Amen. He has done He has done Great things, he has done great things, he, he has done great things, praise his holy name, praise his holy name, the Lord has done great things, he has to all the ministers, all the pastors, and their wives. Greetings to all the professors, advocates, uh, all the youth, Sunday school, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, amen. I know the, the house is packed with some, with a lot of people. So, Allow me to say all protocol is observed. My name is Lucanio. Thank you so much to my brother over there. Uh, when you see him, you see me. When you see me, you see him. Hallelujah. We praise God this morning. Amen. Uh, we, we have been welcomed. We thank God. Uh, this is a celebration of a life well lived. We are not here uh, to be said, brethren. We are here to celebrate a life. Hallelujah. We are here to celebrate a woman of faith. A woman that knows God. Hallelujah. So I, I, don't, I don't want us to, to look miserable. We are here to celebrate. Can I see hands in the house of the Lord? Hallelujah. Greetings to the Mgeni family in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, our God is with you. The mother that your God saved is with you. Be strengthened in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, we are proceeding with the program. We are going to call upon uh, Sis Neziswa Kalichana to come up front. Uh, worship team, please help us with the song, please. <laughs>
Bruxelles are extremely gem. And we will see the Bible like a call of the program director, Wetu. And the Mivam Gwenu, the Kelo Pulisa, Otata Kotubonke, Kaku, Kosile Wetu, Tatu John Melesha, Obe Ambanati, Vela Yonke, Obe Tisnova and Sulegile, Gibulela Aba Fuzubonke, Aba Kona Ekaya, Gibulise O Mama, Aba Amba Notata, Fuzza, Bebe Ambanati, Gibuluso Mama Bakona, Evan Deni, Gibuluso Tata Bonke. Gibuli sabando baacha, gibuli se no Sunday school eka mendengos. Nandi nesis, tingu sista kana kwaanda. Apa ndi mele uteta uteta la siblings. Kodo, genga yomtu uno kwaanda bengui, anuwa zukumande. Uno kwaanda embraced everyone that she met in her life. Starting from Ekai Apobes Salokona, the State Local Memorial Service, but she comes from humble beginnings as Sophia Swela. This is our Kubela Pambili. The Tala Ukun Tayel Bandi Meli Kaila Makoashu, Glomamam, Ndi Mele Kaila Mambo and Doklotatam, Ndi Mele Ikaila Kwachesi, Ngogugand is our Kaila Ngapande Gwendelelo, with all respect, Tatu John. Nebesha and his own Moshe Ekaisha, and the Tela Bonke Abandu Basaman Pondu in Nasama Makoshin, Abakon, Abazo represent on Ogwanda, Bame Apanga Pambil. Ubunina, Bemi Sebenzi Alento Mazanaya Sekai. As his old theatre, Kotwa, Ubunanje, Babandu out to Ben and Abend Leleni, Wabakutaza, Bakon in Pilenyak. O Pula Land. O Pula Land. Sweet Beulah land, upon thy heart I long to stand and view that radiant jasper seas and mansions there. University of Forte. Nditela umdokona ebefunda e University of Forte, Ote wabangu sister kano kwanda, eze nga pambili. Oh, beautiful and sweet, beautiful and Unstoppably from Mtata, the join. My heaven, my hope for forever. My heaven, my
Gauteng. Sisa kutali Whitpen. Kwa sister baga tunu kuanta. Sisi peti. Nikona apa. Sisi nongu. Ningo sister baga tunu kuanta. Sitala nishoyin. Kwa lisa yo. Sisi ukona. Sitala nishoyin. Gamafu. O kwa lisa yo. Gamafu. Gibani mike. who comes from Africa, who's here to represent Unokwanda as a sister, either by faith or by Umsebenzuake at ESCOM or anywhere in Africa, Sister Lastroin. Senzo Bungena, Bantu Bengos, Noba Inga Pela, Ingonzo, Songa Situele, Apa Kotas, Obungena, Bale Gentle Giant, Obu Namsanji. This is also a great Akutuasana Zokal. We're here to celebrate her. Sister Lanistroin, Apanga Pambi. Well, is I owe a What unstoppable Ukutobe <laughs> Sizo upaka msichifu mshope. Asina mazuma ni nzo utete. Andizo yenza antengo basa hindi ngu kwa neleyu. Diabuli la kakulu ku program director wetu. Engu sikaku. Ugu shala guwe. Gumnandi. Guno gupila. Ugu pagate. Yebo siya bonga che Sing God here today, Basalwana. 
we are seeing God. We are seeing the true reflection of God. Hallelujah. Indeed, this is why she was an amazing woman. Uh, now we're going to call upon the, the tributes of the children. Uh, they're all going to come together here. Uh, Mohadi, uh, Sposetu, Kleka. Uh, we'll just come here and then one after the other. Uh, let's just sing a song. See ya, bonga, wenko. gathering us today to celebrate the life of our mother, Nogwanda Mgeni, affectionately known as Squash. I would like to thank each and every one of you who have been a great support during this difficult time and have been here to mourn with us. We thank all our family members who have traveled to be with us and who have helped us get through um, each day. We say a special thank you to Apostle Nabeshe and the Congregation of Assemblies of God for taking your time to come and mourn with us and minister to us the love of God during this exceptionally difficult time. We thank my mother's sisters in prayer for holding us up in prayer. And lastly, we thank all of my mom's colleagues who have joined us today to pay our last respects. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Bukhari Koko. If you had the pleasure of meeting me while my mother was around, she would have introduced me as her baby. I am the youngest of her four children and the mother of her grandchild. It has been so incredibly humbling to listen to all of you share who my mother was to you and the remarkable things she's accomplished. As a child, especially as a mother's baby, it's very difficult to get a full scope of who your parent is outside of being your parent. To me, she was my mommy, my momzo, my kulu, my kuluza. But I've learned in these last two weeks that being my mother was only part of the huge calling that God had on Ogwanda's life. Squash was called to leadership. She was a pioneer who had a vision and in partnership with God, worked relentlessly to bring it to fruition. She was a powerful friend to have, there through thick and thin, always ready to share wisdom and hold her friends up in prayer. Squash was a prayer warrior, a powerful intercessor, a spiritually gifted woman who loved Jesus Christ with every fiber of her being. My mother was an astonishing woman who was a true and bright light in all her spheres of influence. If it's okay with you, I would like to share with all of you who my mother was to us at home. My mommy was a very lively and energetic woman. She loved to dance. In fact, if you played a song in our home, anywhere and at any time, Squash would get up and start dancing. Every time I was home, I would capitalize on this and start singing, Kulu my Kuluza, my Kuluza. And she would go and, sorry, at the top of my voice, and her eyes would light up and she would immediately start dancing. She would go on for as long as I sang and screamed and laughter would erupt when we were done. Other times, you would just hear from the sound of her voice singing, uh-huh. Uh-huh, and you know you would know that there were dance moves to follow. We would all immediately start singing, Go mommy, 
Go, mommy, as she danced to her heart's content. My mom was the ringleader of the joyous chaos that happened in our home. On any given birthday, she would start a braai outside and request music to be played. We would spend the evening laughing, dancing, telling stories, and if we decided to add 30 seconds to the mix, then we'd spend the whole evening making fun of each other. Moreover, my mom was always the first to laugh, even during the most unconventional times. Every night, we would pray together, and one of us would have to share a word and a song. She took, these prayer she took these prayer sessions extremely seriously, and a failure to prepare could result in serious trouble. But there were just these days where one of our words didn't quite make sense, or when we were singing, we were off tune, and we'd look up to my mom, and you could just see her sitting like, and she was laughing, trying to hide her laughter. Needless to say, as soon as we saw her, we all started laughing. <laughs> Some other interesting facts that I would love to share with you about my mom. My mom specialized in being a part-time head chef. By this, I mean that although she would tell us that she is cooking a feast, although we would eat a feast cooked by her, she actually never set foot in the kitchen and relied heavily on our hands to do the labor. She owned her own personal runway show in her bedroom. The standing rule was, if anyone is to walk into the house with new clothes, they have just committed themselves to putting on a one-man show, fashion show, sorry, of all the new items in Squash's room. My mommy loved to sing. She sang everywhere. When she got home from work, when she decided she wanted to come and sit with us downstairs, when she was braying or cooking, you would always hear her singing. She even led every praise and worship session we'd have until she decided that it was time for her to teach us how to sing. And I can comfortably say, now that she's not here, that that's the one mission she failed at. <laughs> My mommy was an impressive multilinguist. She was very well-traveled, and we knew that with every trip, she would come back and teach us the words she learned and all the languages she was exposed to be it French, Swahili, Luganda, whichever language she encountered. She was our biggest cheerleader. If you showed my mommy you were good at something, you had to be prepared to, for her to show the whole world that you were good. Whether it be singing, baking, sewing dresses, my mother took so much pride in our talents and our strong comings, and she would boast about them at every opportunity presented to her. She would then hold the expectation that you will be doing it all the time. My mom loved teachable moments. These were instances where we would mess up, and instead of shouting or correcting us harshly, she would say, you know, this is what we call a teachable moment. And she would go on to correct you and guide you in the gentlest manner. My mom had the biggest smile you have ever seen. She exuded so much love and compassion. I know that she loved people. I know that she poured a lot of her heart out to the people around her but I just cannot describe the love that she had for her children. She loved us with everything within her. Her love was so vast, so unconditional, so patient and relentless. I can only describe it as a love that came from God himself. My mom had four children that she birthed, but I will tell you that she had seven children and she had a special bond with each one of us. My mom had a unique talent of making each of us feel like we were the most important person in the world. She believed in each of us wholeheartedly. She looked past all of our shortcomings and instead consistently chose to see the best in us. She would carve out time for each of us where we would just speak to her for hours. She would cover time for each of us where we would just go to speak to her for hours about life, about our dreams and visions. She would pour her knowledge and wisdom into us, sorry, and speak life over us, pray over us and leave us feeling so full. I can almost confidently say that our favorite moments, memories of her were those where we just nestled in her room watched her favorite shows, and just relished in the quality time that we were privileged enough to spend with her. Having a mother like Nogwanda was a privilege because she taught us so much and she led us from the front. I do not think I've ever seen anyone who loved God as much as my mom did. 
She was rooted in God's word. Everything she did was rooted in the love and fear of God. And the life that she lived was a reflection of who God was in her life. My mom was a very hard worker who prioritized and strived for excellence in everything that she did because the Bible told her, work willingly at whatever you do as though you were working for the Lord. She was persistent and never gave up on anything, regardless of the, how hard the task ahead of her was. Instead, she would say, you know what, Mkhad, the Bible says that we must invite the Lord to come and work with us and then our works will endure. My mother was fearless in everything she did because fear is without faith. Squash embodied Christ's love for us and for everything she, everyone she came across. She honored and respected every single person that she met. And even more so, she constantly looked for ways that she could bring value into a person's life. Her passion to serve people around her, to give of herself generously and abundantly, was so inspiring to witness. She had such a giving heart and she would always tell us, you cannot receive from a closed hand. My mom loved God enough to know that the single best inheritance that she could leave for her children was the love of God. My mom taught us the importance of fellowship from a young age and taught us to pray together and share the Lord's word with each other. These prayer sessions were always fun because on the nights that she would share the word, the session could spontaneously turn into a pop quiz on the Bible. And you had better be ready. She taught us how to read the word and apply it to our lives had to go back to his word in the, work of adver in the wake of adversity because in the midst of the storm, he sits enthroned. She taught us how to have hearts filled with gratitude and always emphasized that in everything, give thanks. As amazing as this was, this, was also, me this also meant that we had to be careful about what we'd tell my mom. We couldn't go to her and say, I'm, mom, I'm sick, because no, the power of the life is in the tongue and you are declaring sickness over your life. <laughs> We couldn't go to her and say that I'm tired because the Bible says that he renews our strength. If anything, we learned to go with her, with our pro to her with our problems when we were ready to hear the truth because regardless of what our problem was, the answer was always the same. Itini Bible. I used to hate when my mom used to introduce me as her baby and I'd tell her this and she'd say to me, Mukhad, you will always be my baby. Even when you are 50, you will be my baby. I don't want to lie, I'm still grappling with God for cheating me of this experience, for robbing us of more years with her, of more of her wisdom, her guidance. I keep thinking of the ways that God should have healed her. But my mom always used to say, there's a difference between fact and truth. The fact is that we are heartbroken as her children, her friends, her colleagues. But the truth is that God is close to the brokenhearted and the Holy Spirit is our comforter. So with that, we will carry the loving memory of our mother as we lay her to rest today. We will also give thanks for now. She has been blessed with eternal peace and she will get to sit in the presence of her heavenly father for eternity as she watches over us. Thank you. Gia masi ukhengiwami agalali agawoseli gega city le uchalanati kusegu. you all in the name of our lovely Lord Jesus Christ and Savior. Amen. Amen. Standing before you is Olu Tinga Nishana.
that's my mama over there, um, who's just spoke before Mukhadi. And I stand here on behalf of my siblings specifically, who um, were her nieces and nephews. And I have so much to say, but I'm unable to say it without crying. So I'll, I'll keep it brief to say thank you, God, for placing my cousin into her life. She has been everything that everyone has been saying and more. Um, I grew up feeling like she was a strict aunt, that she was extremely strict. It's true, but she was strict in a loving way. And it's presenting itself in everyone's speeches today, in anyone's speeches in the past two weeks. And again, I thank God for placing her in our lives and teaching us so much and loving us so much. And I'm grateful to have been able to speak to her a few days before passing um, in length about details about a lot of things and in that conversation she didn't speak about what she was going through but rather wanting to understand what was going on with me my update on my life so um, that's the type of person our aunt is um, rest in peace Max you live in our hearts forever and ever Amen. I greet you all in the name of Jesus this our pastor and everyone who's here to celebrate my mom's life uh, as we heard from Mukadi, mommy had four children, and then she took me, Klabiso, and Ulupiwe in. She took in Ulupiwe in 2011, December, and in January she, 2012, she took me in to further my studies. Later that year, we were joined by Skomzo, who joined Ulupiwe to stay with her in Uganda. Uh, Umama, as already said, she was very strict. So while she was in the house, if you wanted to ask something to mommy, you have to make sure you know your story. And as a result, we had to practice what you want to say. And if it did not add up, mommy was going to say strictly, no, Spo, you are not going there. You are not doing that. And we never understood at the time, but she was all the protection and protecting, protecting us from all the things that are happening outside. Um, Mama was a strong person. <laughs> uh, and our mommy was a strong person. Uh, she was my strength, she was my pillar. I feel like she was the only person who understood me the most. Uh, as we were all both on the same career journey, there was a time where I felt like I am giving up on this career. But mommy was my strength. <laughs> she believed in me more than I could. <laughs> she believed me more than I could. Every time I would come and complain to her, she was like supposed to don't rely on pray to the Lord, itini Bible. And every time I talk to her, I'm like, I, how does she get all this strength and all this wisdom? But every time you have a conversation with her, with her Ozoamba, Ukwele, you're fulfilled, you'll be lacking in nothing. Um, on the last time I was there, Umama was released as Belial. I think it was around the Heritage weekend. And even though she was there for a week, when I asked her, Mommy, how are you feeling? She was like, Spasetu, in his name, I am healed. And Throughout the conversation, she never focused on her sickness. She will talk about life. She was a hardworking lady. She had a good work ethic. She'd be like, I still have work to do. I'm like, mommy, you need to rest. But she does not know what to rest is, ma. <laughs> um, on that day, on that weekend, mommy always prayed for us, even if you did not ask her. She would just say, I am praying for you. Um, but that time when I was there, she was like, Spaset, what do you want the most between um, passing the last board or going to stay overseas? Little did I know that will be my last prayer from her. I know she did not finish from there. She still continued to pray for me. But um, thank great, I'm grateful, Mommy, that I got the opportunity to call you Mommy. I'm grateful for the wisdom, for the strength, that you have poured on me. As I walk this journey, I don't know what I will be without you because you were my strength. You guided me where I was lacking. You were my confidence. 
as I approach the last exam, I'm not only writing for you, Ma, I am writing, I'm not only writing for me, but I'm writing for you. I thank you for the Lord for the time that she has given me with you and all the lessons were all preparing me for this day. Thank you, Ma. Hello. Good, good afternoon. Amen. Um, I'm so happy to be here. I am mom's niece and she took me in 2012 as Paul said and um, I moved to Uganda. In Uganda I skipped several grades and through that process she held my hand. <sighs> my first memories of Uganda were adjusting to mommy being a very strict mommy, always having prayers and even though she wasn't there, she made sure she would call and ask, did you guys pray? The years of pruning, I called them as I look back because I was her little oak tree and mommy took on that task wholeheartedly. She made sure whenever she was around, I got the most out of her, whether it was our long drives to Jinja, where she would trust me with being her co-driver, personal assistant and her worship partner. And back then that involved a lot of Kirk Franklin. She made sure to include me in all aspects of her life. I was even a, mil a mini golfer at some point. That was mommy, honestly. She always wanted us to explore any and everything we took interest in. Most of my siblings would describe me as quirky, or mom would call it random. I can see her tilting her head every time I did something weird or said the first thing that came to my mind, and she would chuckle, I'm going to miss that. I can be what some would call scatterbrained, and mommy would refer to those moments as gomzo moments or blonde moments, which was funny because I ended up dyeing my hair that color. <laughs> that was mom, though, a joker of note. She had a great sense of humor, honestly. Even when we even had a work song when she was working from home. Mom would push and probe in the way that all moms do, whether it was school, extracurriculars, or where our journeys with the Lord were. She always offered encouragement through scripture and prayer. That was always the answer, I must say. Whenever I went to her about anything, she, it, always, it was answered and followed with scripture and ended in prayer. That was mommy. Mom's old sickness was not something she allowed to keep her down. She would always reply, it is well, when I asked how she was doing. A fighter you are, mommy, right to the end. Thank you for being in Bogoto Yetu, mom. You have left behind such a big hole, but I know that you haven't left us alone. We have each other and all of your different teachings, and I pray that we will pass on to one another what you have taught us. Amen. Amen. My grandmother was such a loving. She, teach, she taught us how to be a Christian. She and I remember the day we were racing up the stairs to her room. We, we raced up the stairs to her, my room. Then we watched TV from 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. <laughs> she was such a loving grandmother. When she had her cancer, which I didn't know until my parents told me two days after she died, but she never told me, but she always said what I'm doing. She said, I'm well. She always helped me with my homework when I was struggling. She believed in me to be a Christian. She thought I could do whatever I wanted. She said, believe in your dream because the Lord was with you and when you ever get a fright, I will be with you. You will be my baby until I die or I'm 100. <laughs> she, never, she said, when, I, when I'm not here, still be a Christian. I will and I'll also follow what she did. If she was in my shoes, I think she'd do the same thing. <laughs> She's still watching over us from heaven and back. Amen. She'll always be with us. She taught me everything I know. And now I'm trying to be like her. Amen. 
Hallelujah. Magas bapin denga zanda bazalwana. This is so beautiful. Indeed, she was a great grandmother. Amen. Look to your neighbor, say Makelwane. We are here to celebrate a life that is well lived. Hallelujah. We want to recognize all the ministers of the gospel in our midst, starting with Apostle John Nabesha. I can see uh, Pastor Lohueng, I can see Pastor Mavimbela, I can see the ministers from the Center Assemblies of God. Uh, I can see everyone here, recognizing everyone in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We have our restrooms on the right, on my right here. So if you need some restroom, you can go to our right. And we also want to welcome everyone that is viewing us online this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. We do understand that people from all over the world are watching us, they are streaming, and as such, we are also going to receive tributes that are coming from countries that are overseas. Amen. For now, can we celebrate? Who's ready to celebrate? Yes, it might be painful to us right now, but in the heavenly places, there is joy. Hallelujah. Amazulu, I have Namlanje because they have gained another one. They have gained a good sorrow. Can you move your hand like this? If you are able to stand, can you stand on your feet as you move your hand like this? If you are able to stand, can you stand and you move your hand like this? Hallelujah. Glory to the Son of God. Glory. Glory. Celebration in the name of Jesus Christ. We are going to call upon the next speakers and Ms. Zautela Usisi Tamgeni to come. And immediately after her, I want the friends, all the friends, to prepare themselves. I believe that there are three friends that are going to speak, so we are going to call all of them at once. Immediately after Usita Mgeni. Etetile, after Sisitamgeni, we are going to ask a worship team to lead us into a vibrant song as we welcome the friends. For now, let us pitch a song to welcome Sita Mgeni. <laughs> all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, I'm nervous, but the same way that the Lord was with Moses when he was anxious about his task, 
he's with me too. So, Samuel. I greet you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I greet our pastors, fathers, mothers, and all friends in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I've been tasked with talking about the illness that inhabited my mother's body. Note that I did not say her illness, but rather an illness that inhabited her body. Mommy always said, do not own the problem, speak life into it. Therefore, she would say, I am not sick. What I am is healed in the name of Jesus. And she's been healed indeed. She is in her spirit form that is not weak like the flesh. The form she was in before, she was formed in her mother's womb, her purest and most perfect form, amen? Mommy was diagnosed with stage three ovarian cancer in early 2021. It has been a tough journey. She started chemo shortly after her diagnosis, and this was followed by surgery to remove her ovaries and her uterus. She had more cycles, she had cycles of chemo, and at the end of 2021, she was told that the cancer was gone and that she was in remission. Unfortunately, at the end of 2022, the cancer came back. She started chemo again, but this time, the cancer was non-responsive and treatment had to be abandoned. She was relatively healthy and in good spirits until June 2023 when she started to become unwell again. She consulted a number of doctors, some knew and some that had known her during the last course of cancer. None of them could quite understand what was happening and why. Her new oncologist finally diagnosed her with primary peritoneal cancer and told her that it was notoriously hard to treat. She continued to deteriorate as her stomach filled with fluid, fluid that then moved to her lungs. In mid-September, she was admitted to hospital to have the fluid in both her lungs and stomach drained. Two weeks after that, she received her first chemo dose. They call it the red devil. That would be her first and last. Five days later, sadly, she left us. Her loss was a total shock to us all. We had plans for the future, plans we made with her. We believed completely that she was going to be healed here on earth. Her body was failing, but mommy remained strong. She fought with courage and strength, holding on firmly to his promises, strengthening us and herself in his word. Yet there were signs, we just didn't see them. She had thanked me more than once for caring for her during her illness and told me we have to say these things, Sita, before there is no more time left. At the time I was dismissive because I thought, I won't fast, we have at least 20 years left. More than once she said, the time has come for you, our children, to take your place to carry on the work that we began, for you to pray for others the way that we have prayed for you. And I said, but mommy, we have time. You continue the pray and we continue the receiving. And she said, no, the time has come to pass on the baton. Your time has come. When I went into her room the morning of the day of her passing to check on her, I began to cry. I felt the room I left the room and prayed, Lord, your will be done. Never at any point during her illness have I, had I ever felt like she was going to leave. We had faith. I think I was the last one to do the word that Mukhadi was talking about. And I said, your friends are panicking, mommy, and I don't understand why. And she said, why do you say that? I say, when son of Teran, I know, sorry, I know. But Bensano Tedano, I know, and the way she's speaking, she's so panicked. I don't understand what they're panicking about. And she said, explain. And I said, no, we can't say we trust him to heal you and then turn around and be afraid. What are we afraid of? Either we believe or we don't believe. Not that I'm saying you don't believe, Andy. That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm saying I believed completely that she would be here for the next 20 years. So when I went into her room 
this morning, Wednesday the 11th, and I began to cry. I did not understand. So I left the room quickly. I go into my room and I say, Father, I don't understand. I feel despondent. And I prayed, your will be done. Your will be done. Her breathing was labored and she was weak. We went to see her GP and they referred us to the oncology center. However, we would end up at Mill Park Hospital. Not half an hour later, after they had attended to her, her heart stopped. They called me in and informed me that they had been performing CPR for close to half an hour. And I started crying again. People in my family have been saying, sit down, Kali, and they don't know. I did all my crying that day. I said, I need to see her. They let me in. And yeah, they were still performing CPR on her. I mean, I watch a lot of doctor shows, but I was not prepared for what I saw in there. But he strengthened me because I was not hysterical. I went over and I held her feet. And I said, Father, I lay her life at your feet. Your perfect will be done. I felt his perfect peace wash over me. Mama was leaving, but it was good. Every time I looked over at her that day as we were traveling between the clinics and everything, I kept saying, all right. And she responded with the same words over and over. I'm tired. I need to rest. I wasn't hearing you then, Mama, but I hear you now. Rest then, Manyaos. You have earned it. Amen. Gonya maga chuta wango musatange masiminga guwe songo chwa kubani gonya Calling all the friends, the three friends. Ladies and gentlemen, all protocol observed. I know that we're running out of time and I will try and squash my message in as much as I can, but if I don't, please forgive me. As I was coming on stage, my first prayer was the ability to forgive myself if I forget anything or if I overemphasize anything. So I've already forgiven myself, so you can only forgive me if there's anything you feel I will be missing. Before I talk about everything else, I want to pause as special friend and talk about her kids. The way they have nursed their mother was unbelievable. In life, there is this quotation that we always hear about that says we must have that ability to plant trees even if we know that we are not going to sit under the shades of those trees. Is that common? In parenting, that tree is your children. And as we all raise our children, as our parents raised us, they knew they would love to enjoy the shade will provide them. Or they might enjoy it, but if they don't, somebody else will. But they continue to do the job anyway. I'm raising this because Squash was very blessed as my friend. The trees that she planted, which is her children, forget about the career and anything else, 
the children that you will need in the times of difficulty and in the times of true happiness. Squash, receive that. And very few parents will receive that. Others will die being cared in a hospice. Others will die alone in hospitals. Stories are being told. And maybe children are successful. They are all over the world making lots of money. But my dearest kids, but Chanabam, oh, and yes, can Pagamin Nong, Elan Pagamin Jinibon in Jim, and Sensei Abanyaman to Denzalamna. Difuna Wutikoni, the gift that you have given your mother, it's a gift that all of us we should strive for. I know Squash did that to her parents, and I know that we did that for their parents, for our parents, but we should continue praying that one day, when we really want to be happy, our kids will be surrounding us. And when we are desperate and need care and love and affection, your kids will nurse you. That is now the shade from a tree that you've actually planted yourself. You have been that tree to squash. And I want to say thank you very much. You can sit down. Now, if I were to talk, because yeah, on behalf, I'm here on behalf of friends. So I asked friends to say, if we were to describe squash, how would you describe her in two words? And I'm reading these because I think all of us from today onwards, we must, I think let's have this homework about ourselves to say, if people were to describe us in two words, what would they say about us? Now, the answers I got, compassionate, wise, prayer warrior, trailblazer of note, unshakable, unmovable, peaceful, phenomenal, ray of sunshine, peace personified, spiritual, selfless, brilliant, humble, dependable, supportive, welcoming, kind, loving, and graceful. So those, that's the input I got from some of the friends. Other messages were coming, but I couldn't spend here the whole day because I felt it's all captured. And I think the great question is that, do we have a similar impact? From my side, I was saying Squash is caring. She is so understanding. She is focused and purposeful in life. And again, I said she's selfless. When I why did I say Squash is living a life of purpose? Squash enjoyed the job she was doing. There were ample opportunities for her but the triple AG to her was her passion. When I would try to convince her to say, no, 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 Squash, there are many other opportunities. You can make so much money here with ease and whatever. And we started to come up with a plan. And uh, beginning of last year, she said to me, son, can you hold on on that plan? Because God is sending me to the saga. I said, no, Sana, you can't be serious. I said, no, no, no. <laughs> you know, there is a mission. There's a purpose that I have got to achieve. So it's teaching us that as people, we do things that make sense to us. Squash had a purpose. She was doing things that made sense to the universe. So I think I really real respect for her that. And I would love uh, the colleagues, as I said in the memorial service, all over Africa to understand the type of a person Squash was. She wasn't there because she wasn't desperate. She wasn't there that there were no other golden opportunities that she could have in a simple and a more convenient form. But she was there because she loved to. And it was her passion and it was her purpose. And when we look into her illness, she would say, for instance, I would hear from other friends whilst not here that you, Squash, is so ill. And I will be saying, OK, I'm landing tomorrow, so I'm going to go and visit. And when we land, I text to Squash and say, hey, son, can we come straight to your home? We just landed. He says to me, son, I'm boarding a flight to Lusaka. <laughs> Did you know you can't be serious? You were sick yesterday. I said, no, 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 son, just these two days. After two days, I'm going to come back and we'll sit. He tells me, it's a memorial service. And hallelujah, Pinda. But as a band, they are breaking bread. Tinano squash because when we started from our humble beginnings at Hillbro, Sasithala, Sibenalo, Rose, Lego Flemba, Senzelu squash, singing a pansy singing as sofa, Sisigalenyam, Indaba is Puma, Yoke, or Mammies. 
Yes, yeah. So again, we go land level like a yo theta. So city, yeah, it could be problem. We find that city is too lens. We have one. So again, what I say is that we come lens class boy. And Nyani get because she's selfless. Guy boy, I need theta now. We have to focus. We couldn't call. I found that this city is not before. As a sickle area, because it is a shield, it's a protector. Now there are people that we have our paths crossing with, but there are those who leave permanent footprints in there in our hearts. Squash was one of them. She's left permanent footprints wherever she has been working, all over Africa, in South Africa, Africa, South Africa, in all the provinces, everybody you've come across, who squash has left a permanent footprint uh, in that person's heart. Now, towards the end, Usquash had peace bubble. She liked to speak about it. The last doctor who was going to treat her, Usquash said, hey, we are born now, but son, I'm in my peace bubble. Then she has to go to Donald Goldman for the first time. And she goes there for treatment and she comes back. We used to joke again about the oncology. You know, some of them are like public hospitals and whatever. And uh, she says, son, we haven't seen a public hospital. Mna, I've experienced Donald Gordon as a public hospital. And son, I'm in my peace bubble. I'm not getting out of my peace bubble. And indeed, on her last day when she was really suffering, she was on casualty at Donald Gordon and she waited and she couldn't get a bed. And finally, she was transferred to Mill Park, where she ultimately got the treatment that she deserved. So wasn't it true that it was a public hospital treatment that she actually got? It's just so unbelievable that uh, one could actually experience that. And unfortunately, that is what she actually experienced. Um, so I didn't know when she got, where she actually got this peace bubble and her change because she was a fighter, she was fighting this disease, she was positive. We've been planning Mukhadi's uh, uh, oath on the 2nd of December. Um, and when I last spoke to her, we spoke about all those things in a very different way. But that made me realize that it looked like her peace bubble was more than real uh, to me because I didn't know. And on a Saturday, uh, she wrote us a message as friends, which has been on screen to say goodbye to all of us, but we didn't know the meaning of it up until a uh, princess said after we lost her, but Sana Usquash had said goodbye to all of us. And the message was on screen, but it says if I shorten it on the relevant uh, aspects of it, I sincerely thank you individually and collectively for your prayers, for your constant calls, for your visits, and everything you have supported me with. I know that you've been my strength during this tough time. Giving in has been a possibility, but your prayers carried me. You never allowed me to give in. Grace, peace, and blessings to you all. That is the message that Usquatch sent us on a Saturday before her last breath on Wednesday. So it's, it's, it's very sad and it's very touching. But then, Bantonamaka Squash, I know that it's an promise that is um, but maybe it might not turn out that way. But Usquash Uninike, the biggest inheritance you could ever dream of in life. What is that inheritance? The faith and belief in Jehovah our God. That is very powerful because kids who are left with, who are not left with that inheritance, they wonder and they don't know what to do and they can blame everything else on the fact that they lost their parents at a young age. The Bible promises us in Psalm that we are over is giving experience to the inexperienced. He will give wisdom to the unwise. So you're looking at yourself there. You are inexperienced. We know that very well. We are also not as experienced as we would love to be. But who will give us the experience that we need when we face life's challenges? It's only him. So it doesn't matter who unseen who is there, or an princess, or an or unseen or an atawe. It doesn't matter. You have your relationship with Jehovah, and you must actually value that relationship. He continues to say in Isaiah 48, verse 17 to 18, um, you can find yours if you would love to, because I have to read mine. 
And when I read mine, please forgive me because the memorial service and I am English because then the Lenamanto Abanins are massive very stores. So eat again, Moko, guess it closer. Near Silver Moss went on a mass precious cross when you found the same. Would you wear over Um Shaoli Luaco? Low Unwelekas Rail. Mnaya over the Mutiko Waco. Low Ukufundisa is in do as the good night dio. Low Ukukakelela and the Lenny of Fanele Uambenga. Uskwasha keko. So le vesi eating gogo, neza ku kwakelwa, uye over ngu bayang uza on the fundis in doza nata, zini kwakele endle lene meline ambengayo. We eighteen ati, ukubanje, bandona bagaskwash, nenga imamela imiale lokaye over. Ukolo lwenu, luya gubanjong mlambo, no bulungi sabenu, bubenjanga maza o luang. That is the biggest inheritance any person or child can ever wish for to make sure that you will be in a world of peace. Peace that's like a river. You see how wide the river is, and it's quiet. And righteousness, that's like the waves of the sea. They are noisy, you can't miss them. They are all over, they are unstoppable. Squash's righteousness as your mother, because she was led by Jehovah, has been unstoppable, it could not be ignored. It has been like the waves of the sea. So that's what we will be getting. And then just the last two verses I wanna read for you. For you to get these benefits, I want you to read in Dumiso 1 verse 1 to 3, which is Psalm in English. Uh, 1 verse 1 to 3. Um, again, the Tela Uifunang is closer because Ben Kenda Yenzang is in this. Oh, it's better to just close them up. City, one more bile, um to onga and beyond get the disola benzibubi, no game me or end the linear bone. Nonga Salio is Salio in a Sabateta Ukusa. The Abanus Tos and the Stata Londa Sibeka Gagleta. So Bandana Bam Ninga and Benitaki song about the Batetu Kusa. We are born. Eat Lulegan will be eating. Godwa, Otanda um teto Gaya over. No funda um teto work in Gelizu, Eli Pansi, Imini Nobusuku. Usquashun fundi Silelond. Ubanil funda, Kubegan nil funda. Uves three one pin un Thames and Wolfhog. Uti. Tis out again, Ogbandana Basquash, Nizakubanjangom, Ti or Chalwe, Nakuni singer, your man's. Imi Ti Evelisa is the come on get a shalazo. Ama Kabi Anga Bunio, Ya Yonke into Enienzayo is a cupomele. Ubanga Busquash only shena le peyton. Any leader to this kind of success. He don't want to know about many Benizai, Taina Kusquash. Because Abandana Banins can buy for man. Titella ni receive, ni embrace, ni kubeke, ni bamba le peyton. Because if kabele ni kutwa, ni zabangati ni ngamiti, echalu emanzi, na I dry up, wakutwa hai, woku kitra hauta kondoni. Izi kamo zenu za uvela ngeetwa sheli lilo. Hadi, your second of December oath will be isi kamo esa uvela. Ngeetwa shala, so suzu bali iti mdanamu. So, di akta ilindo bana si iba ambelondo, and in jema si yazi ke ngo kindo bana, we will be living under anxieties. And in Yanni Cassia Villa, upper things will start to change. But U Philip 4, verse 6 to 7, Uti, E anxieties in Zonke, the porcelain we are over. But in Donamani, a labor says in Lesuin Zen, U squash a man with peace bubble that made her to reach her final days in a very peaceful way, saying, It is well with my soul. So, Tina, how can we make sure that we remain in that peace bubble? Well, Philip 4, verse 6 and 7, Uti sitanda zela ukolo lukatito, lukate inklizyo zetu, nengondo zetu. So, again, ditike bando na magasquash, you will have your anxieties, posele ni kuye over. You will have, umibule lo yenu, posele ni kuye over. But, above all, remain in that peace by making sure that it's not only your peace, it's not your mother's peace, it's not common sense peace, but it is God's peace that is actually guarding your hearts and minds. So, ndiyani tzela ke, ndiyani tutu zela, tina ke siba dalas tutu zelo wa mtu sosa uzbonela ubasa utini. Kotu wake ekabele ni, Usquash has been a lovely lady. All the words that have been used to describe her, I really cannot take or half from them. Instead, if I had time, 
I could multiply and multiply. And thank you to everyone who is here to show that squash was not just a life, but was here to give us a life of impact, was here for a purpose, and at the end of the day, we all left happy knowing it is well with our souls. Thank you. Shall we clap hands for her in the name of Jesus? We are on track with our program. We are right on time. And I'm going to beg all of our speakers to really work with us on this one. If we call three speakers to come to the fourth, let them come so that we can be on track. We are doing everything all right, and we don't want to get out of the way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are left now with the two friends. Let them come and take reasonable time so that we can move on with the program. Dingene, dingene, ndu misweni. Oh, banengo mayap. All right. Thank you. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I just want those who are playing this song to honor and respect my sister, a friend, my confidant, Nagwanda. I loved you so much, and I'll love you and miss you forever. But I just want to say with this song, when we were there in, his room, in her room, I remember the day on the 11th, and I came back from the hospital. Nagwanda had a big house. But every time I was there, she would say, come and sleep here next to me. We slept in one bed and we prayed. We would pray until we don't know what. So when I was sleeping there that night, uh, oh, let me just say before she passed on, we spoke about you, Mohadi, and this is your gift from mom. We're talking about your graduation. And she says to me, we're playing songs because I could see it was after the hospital when you saw I'm not going to go to the videos but we took some selfies and they were playing what are, how are we going to be walking through that red carpet when you walk in there that's the pride of a mom she says to me what song are we going to play I'm playing songs she looks at me she's like then I play another one there's a song we played that said um, see what the Lord has done then she says to me that's a song. That's a song. And I said, that's a song your mom wants you to be walked in. And that was going to be her part with me, to walk behind you. And we are still going to do it. But to the family, to the children, Baganokwanda, Mohadi, you've taken a bait on. See where you've taken a bait on. Young as you are, to run with it now and never look back. I was looking at Siwe this week, running, hitting the freeway, wiping tears all over the road. And I looked at him and I thought, if life is like this, then this is really it. But thank you so much, Mandana Bami, for respecting your mom. Can we just play this song once again? It's a blessing. It's a blessing. It's a blessing. It's a blessing to Abandana Baganogwanda. It's a blessing that you guys will walk under. It's a blessing that your mom has sowed so much seed wherever she has been in the world. And with this song, we dedicate it to you. To say, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord, may, the, may his face shine upon you all the time, everywhere you go. To those who will be in Zambia, may the Lord shine upon you. To those who will be in South Africa, may the Lord shine upon you. May his blessings be upon you. With this song, we're saying to you what has happened to this family. If you listen to it, to the, to the words of the song. It says the Lord is with you, he's not, he's, he is for you, he is not against you. What has happened to Nogwanda is what we have prayed for, but without knowing. When we said, Lord, heal her, 
this is the healing that we receive from God. So Oguet Manje is to just say, Lord, bless them. May you just play it once more, play it once more, play it once more. Can you just lift up the, 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 the volume? He is for you. He is for you. He is for you. The Lord is not against you. He loves you so much. You are blessed. You are blessed. You are blessed. The word of God says, He maketh rich and he had no sorrow. None of Nogwanda's children will lack anything. You will never lack, for your mom has invested for generations to come. And thank you for loving your mom and walking with her to the end. Over to you, my sister. Thank you. Thank you. I greet everyone in the name of Jesus, especially Abandona Bakanokwanda and the Mgeni family and the family of choice. So now we're never ready for this. Your sudden departure has been a very hard pill to swallow. Yours has been an amazing life of trials and tribulations. I recall that you were extremely sick in February 2019 in Zambia, and you had to be airlifted to Charlotte McLeake. We panicked. We were very worried. We spent sleepless nights praying for your recovery. And by God's amazing grace, you recovered from your illness. The true woman of faith you are, you thanked God for healing and allowing you to continue with your good works. Fast forward to 2023. This time around, you are so much at peace with your difficult health circumstances. When I spoke to you that morning that you died, you told me that Sana but God has told me he's going to heal me. God is faithful and he's compassionate. He did that, Mshobam. He healed you. You are at peace, you feel no pain. But we were selfish. We wanted him to heal you for us. I'm convinced that you are at peace now and you're free from pain. On the other hand, son, I also know that as a prayer warrior that you are, you're probably looking down at us, pleading with God to wipe away our tears and embrace us with his healing mercies. Nogwanda was a true embodiment of calmness peace-loving, generous, deeply spiritual, hard-working, and resilient. Nokwanda lived a life of love, according to John 15, verse 12 to 15, which reads, this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. She was a generous woman. She gave of herself, shared her resources whenever help was needed. I remember in my situation, the one time I was desperate and stranded with the registration fees for one of my nephews. And it was the last day of registration. When I shared this with Nogwanda about my predicament, she said, Son, I can delay settling my current debt. Let's, let us get your child registered. We'll sort my debt later. She was also generous with her time as well, always wanting to be of service to all those who needed help. Everyone who has spoken here about her 
has talked about how deeply spiritual and generous and committed to God she was. Whenever I visited her during the period of her illness, we would end up chatting our, about our other personal challenge. And Squash would advise me and pray for me in respect of my personal challenges. And by the time I get home, I have SMSs with scripture passages to help to pray over. Let us remember her, not just as a friend and a sister, but as in our inspiration and guiding light. Let us leave her legacy and spread love. Nukwanda was resilient throughout her life. She had faced uphills, emotional stress, stressful demands at work, family, kids, like all of us. But she faced all these challenges with determination, resilience, and humility. Through all those challenges, Nukwanda remained calm and focused. This was evident during her last days of her life because she would always say, Sana, I'm in a peace bubble. It's not the first you hear of this. It didn't matter what the situation was. When I got angry on an incident Usindi mentioned, I was so angry. And no one to know, son, I just listened to him. And he went on and on. I just sat in my peace bubble. And when he finished, I gave him the correct facts. He was embarrassed, but wouldn't apologize. But I remained in my peace bubble. You know, as friends, you get angry on behalf of a friend. Sometimes call them names. Don't call them names. She refused to give up on any task. It didn't matter how difficult it was. She would work on it until she found a solution. She loved mentoring and helping people to progress and succeed. About two years ago, uh, no, despite the amount of work and the exhausting traveling schedule, no wonder tutors, tutored accounting students from the University of Venda. God knows where she found these students. But one of my nephews was a beneficiary here locally, and she was tutoring them for free. She celebrated with us in times of joy and achievements, and she stood by us in times of sorrow. I will never forget the support I got from Nogwanda when I came back from burying my dad in Ngobo, Eastern Cape. She stayed with me the whole week to make sure I was okay and left her house. She was a confidant, a mentor, a source of unwavering support. I have no doubt that her absence is leaving a big void in our lives, but let's allow her spirit to continue to shine in our hearts. Your legacy of love and inspiration will continue to guide us, Nokwanda. She was a pillar of strength to her siblings, be comforted, Siblings like Nogwanda. Nogwanda cared and loved you, and she still does. Bandanawaga Squash, your mom loved you unconditionally and would do anything to see you happy and fulfilled. She continues to love you because she is in your hearts today. Unifundi Sile, I have no doubt about that. I had goosebumps. You saw the little girl here. When she heard her granny had passed, she said a prayer in a room full of adults. She paid, prayed for her granny in heaven, and she prayed for us and said, may the grace of Lord be with her friends and family who are here sad. I couldn't believe it. Somehow, because from Zambia, again. Two weeks before her passing, we had arranged to meet on a Saturday, and she asked me to come in the afternoon because she had gone 
to find a school for Ulupiwe. It was a Ulupiwe Naye Azobalapa because because of his sickness. To the Mgeni family, us as friends and chosen family, may God's mercy give us all comfort knowing that her painful suffering has ended. She was a special woman. Just before we go down, I just want to take this opportunity to thank the Zealous in the team of friends that we were and that we still are going to be through Nogwanda. I just want to thank you, Cindy, your family, your husband, for all the things you've been doing. And not just today, uh, you've been amazing. May the Lord bless you once again, Cindy. Let me say, it makes us wonder what a friend you are to all of us. And because without you, Cindy would not be able to do all that she is doing. Thank you once again, sir. God bless you. Can we, can we give, please, uh, give them a round of applause. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, we are on time. Thank you, uh, all the speakers. We, we are really humbled as well. You know, being a program director is not easy, but for your cooperation, we thank you. God bless you. Uh, to sis, uh, no wonder's kids, guys, you've been left with a treasure. Uti ko unishiele ilifa. What a privilege. We see other people bashelwa inyo kanga bantu ba. This is will this will keep you, but sis, no wonder is left you with God. That's a lifetime investment. I remember uh, Basalwane as a worshiper. I remember as a worshiper, we're going to take up on our feet now and ask the worship team and, and our instruments uh, to come and help us. There's a song that she loved. I remember one Sunday, Oh, at the Gadu Shabelelengoma, it is Jehovah is your name. Jehovah is your name. Jehovah, Jehovah is. Your name, Jehovah is your name, Jehovah. Let us worship.
Oh, Barcelona, let us give God a round of applause. We are serving a great God. And we are celebrating the life here because of this great God. Hallelujah. Uh, we have speakers, Barcelona, from all over the world, as my brother just said. Uh, the technical team is going to help us with that now. We're going to be handing over to some speakers that we have that are online. Uh, I hope you guys are ready. Thank you, technical team.
My name is Evans Mulera. And the triple AAG, which Memno Kwanda represented on our executive committee. I thank all of you for showing me love and compassion for Memno Kwanda in life and in heaven. We are deeply saddened by the passing of Memno Kwanda Mgeni, our gallant hero. She was always ready to guide us in many situations whenever we felt stranded at the African Communication Initiative. She helps she helped us to identify the priority strategies that have made us successful in moving the API to great heights of success. Memnokwanda took action when needed to meet corporate larger than herself, because she naturally subjugated personal ego in favor of serving the greater human cause, things that are bigger than herself. She was a results oriented leader, a mentor who reminded us all to apply ourselves in the best way and deliver service to provide a for our stakeholders and the common citizens of the African continent. Um, Memno Kwanda, a few weeks ago, she sent me a message and informed me about transportation in hospital. And the message broke my heart because I knew that we were going through pain, but nevertheless, we're still showing our feet a lot of suffering. Please accept my heartfelt condolences during this difficult time. Memnokwanda's contribution to the African professionalization initiative and her dedication to her profession have left an intelligible mood. Her leadership and expertise will be greatly missed and will never be forgotten. May her soul rest in eternity, and may we all find peace and comfort in the memory we share in her. My sincerest condolences to all the hearts that grieve in life, but we also rejoice in joy with the angels above and for the eternal life which was appointed for all who believed. Our comfort is in knowing that Memnokwanda is now in her eternal home and resting in the presence of the Almighty God. May you all find peace and comfort in that reassurance and acceptance of our eventual journey. God bless you all. Amen. Thank you. You are my strength, strength like no other, strength like no other. Reaching to me, 
Lord, you are my strength, strength like no other, strength like no other, reaching to me in the fullness of your grace and in the power of your name. You lift me up, you lift me up, greetings from Uganda, it was with great shock that we heard about the contest passing. My name is Ingrid.
Hallelujah. Uh, just a few, few questions. I don't know if Mr. Brian is online. If he's not a uh, technical team, do you have the video? Have you prepared the video? Okay. So, Bazalwane, we, we are blessed, really blessed. Uh, you see, when you listen to the speakers here, one you will wonder, Ute, Gubani lube siambanai. One will wonder, Bangubani lube siambanai. I remember my figure uh, at our church. We are in the, in the informal settlements, Bazalwane. A very small church. She came in there and then she volunteered to be a Sunday school teacher. Who does that? Because Abantu, they will, they will be, you know, pushing their weight. Ogoti, this is me, guys. Feel me. This is my presence, but not her. A Sunday school teacher. So we are all amazed by this brave woman. I mean, the qualities that she had, Bazalwane, we can only dream of that. We can only wish Abazalwane can live a life like that. You know, God first. God first. No matter the education, but God first. No, no, no matter how successful you are, but God first. Because from God is all we get, all these things. All the achievements that we get because of God. Amen. Thank you. mentorship that she provided, the leadership that she so generously shared with all of us, holding our hands, creating networks, empowering us, spoke volumes about the person that she was, the love for Christ that she shared with all of us. It's from the interactions, the growth that I experienced while working for her that spurred me into actually looking for bigger stages for, for me to create more impact in my networks. I ended up going back to my country of origin in Zambia after I finished uh, my assignment with ESCOM and ran as a member of parliament and won those elections and the president appointed me into his cabinet as a cabinet minister. And I did one term as a member of parliament one five-year term as member of parliament and cabinet minister. Uh, when I left government, I moved back into the private sector, moved to Canada to join a renewable energy company. All these opportunities, I credit the hand that Nokwanda had in my career. She gave me an opportunity, she expanded my horizon, she changed my life trajectory, she impacted me and shared that time generously. I was chatting with her recently agreeing that um, when I go to Zambia to visit, we're going to, um, to have coffee and catch up because we hadn't seen each other in a while. I also had some great news to share with her that I was taking a CEO position and moving to Nairobi. And we agreed that we're going to meet. And uh, true to Nokwanda's fashion, she shared with me that she was not feeling well, but she didn't make it sound like it's something that I needed to worry about or something that may even get to this. Uh, she will be missed. She touched many lives, she was impactful, she was generous, and as we mourn her, I also choose to celebrate her today. She'll be missed. Thank you. Hallelujah. Shall we give a round of applause to all our online speakers? 
Thank you very much for connecting with us here on this important occasion where we are laying Mamunokwanda to rest. It is a day of celebration. It is the day that the Lord has made. We are choosing to be glad and rejoice in it. Hallelujah. How many of us are still present? How many of us are still blessed? Hallelujah. We also have speakers that are coming from her work fraternity that are here who are also going to speak. But before we give it to them, I just want our praise team to give us a beautiful song, a praise song, so that we can be able to come back to church. Look at your neighbor, say, Maki, come back to church. Praise team, let's go. Praise team, let's go. Praise team, let's go. Aibo, singa bantu si anunga tina. Asuga ma Yesu, Yesu ma ye. Singa bantu si anunga tina. Asuga ma Yesu, Do we have mothers in the house? Give me J. Give me E. Give me S. Give me U. Give me S. Shout Jesus. There is power in the name of. Don't worry, by quarter past one, we're handing over to Apostle John Nabecha. Hallelujah. We are on track. Amen. Utwa umamunokwanda wa itanda zela nemichini le. At ESCOM, she will pray for the machines. And uh, that is why Uganda was performing at over 90%, as opposed to South Africa, which is currently at just at 56%. So we're praying for the same grace of Uganda. Uganda, if you are watching us online, we are connecting with that grace. Amen. Now, um, I just want to quickly check Dr. James, are you in the house? Yes. Thank you. And um, we have uh, Malisho Honolo Mahase. Are you in the house? And then the last speaker from that fraternity, Mayidi Makubela. We are going to all ask all of them to come to the fourth so that they can give us a bit of how was she at Sebenzini at her workplace, in the meetings, and every other place that she contributed to economically. Praise Tim, let's sing a song as welcome these speakers in the name of Jesus. Basuga,
you very much, uh, Programs Director. Uh, my name is Dr. James Wanyoin. I come from Uganda, where Nokwanda spent over a decade working with us. And maybe before I say much, I will ask my former chairman of ESCOM Uganda Limited, who's with me, to greet you in the local language. Good morning, Moloene Sanbonani. My name is Homocho Skepers. I work for ESCOM here in South Africa, which is the S uh, mother company to ESCOM Uganda. And I was a former chairman together with James on the board of ESCOM Uganda. James, back over to you. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I would like to introduce members of the board of ESCOM Uganda Limited, just if you can stand up for recognition. Those who are in the board or who have served in the board, I know, yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. Um, I'll tell you three little stories before I give my comments. The first one is, how did I get to know Nokwanda? In about May 20, 2008, she invited me that she wanted to have a conversation with me. So I met her with the then chairman of ESCOM Uganda Limited, the late James Moluana. We had a conversation, three of us. At the end of that conversation, I saw someone who had a lot of focus, love, and compassion. And I made a decision that I would work with her as a board member for ESCOM. And I joined ESCOM in 2008, August, until today. She was full of love and compassion. And she built ESCOM, built a very strong culture. The first one was every meeting at ESCOM Uganda Limited starts with a prayer. And we did that, and that culture has remained. Even today, when we have Tozama as the managing director, we've continued with that culture. <laughs> then, the next story I want to share with you is, I'm leaving South Africa this week with a very big lesson. And the lesson I learned today is that actually it's what is in the Bible in, uh, in Proverbs 22 verse 6 train up a child in the way he should go and when he's old we will not depart from it you all saw how that little grandchild Coco talked here that is how we should teach our children. If there is anything you are going to live with here, please let's live with what Nokwanda did to teach the child when they are young the ways of the Lord. The third story I will share with you is Nokwanda loved, she would always want us as board members to be involved in things she loves. So she would call me and say, come to Jinja. I'm based in Kampala. Jinja is 80 kilometers away where the dams are. Come to Jinja, we have a golf tournament. Once in a while, I would say, OK, let me go. But I would be a spectator. She said, but you, you have to be better than that. So anyway, I didn't become a golfer until after she had left. So one day, I posted a picture on Twitter to say the swings are getting better. That was at Uganda Golf Club. And she tweeted back and said, James, the golf bug has finally caught you. <laughs> so that's the kind of humor she had. Of all the tens of comments I got, that one stuck in my mind. Then I, find, I eventually tweeted to her and said, I'm practicing hard. When you come back to Kampala, we shall have a game. So that's how 
humor as she was. She was full of compassion. ESCOM Uganda, I know the program's director has just, uh, one of the colleagues has just said, she improved the, the, the power generation in Uganda. It's not just at 90%. When she came, Uganda had power blackouts. Nokwanda left when there were no power blackouts in Uganda. We don't have power blackouts. We have power availability in the range of 96 to 99%. As a board, we were so happy with her work because every year we try to stretch the targets and she would achieve them. Then you stretch more, you give more stretching targets the following year and she would achieve them. That is what Nokwanda was. But apart from that, she also had this love for bringing up the young people. She introduced a system of admitting interns, graduate interns to ESCOM. And I want to assure you, in Uganda now, we have, she helped to build a generation of engineers and technical people working in the power sector. Those people are now either serving in ESCOM Uganda Limited or have been absorbed in other hydropower stations. And one of them, I want him to stand up. Stephen, can you stand up? Just once more. Stephen was admitted as an intern, but he grew in the ranks with her mentorship until he's now director in the board with us of ESCOM Uganda Limited. Thank you, Stephen. Um, Nokwanda had, like I, I use the word compassion, she had love for community. She participated in the church activities. You saw the, the, the testimony from Ginger. But not only that, she also mobilized ESCOM Uganda Limited to participate in shared value initiatives. She was particularly involved in making sure the areas around the River Nile, where the, the dams is built, the two dams are built, have good forest cover. We planted thousands of trees with her support. That was Akwanda. She also did a very remarkable thing in the northern part of Uganda. We had a very serious rebellion in the northern part of Uganda, led by somebody called Konyi, and it caused a lot of destruction. A lot of children suffered. Nokwanda, together with the former High Commissioner of South Africa to Uganda, they worked and set up a skilling center in Gulu. That's the, one of the biggest cities in northern Uganda. And that skilling center has trained now, it started with five people, but it now churns out over 5,000 young people in the northern part of Uganda. And more especially, re rehabilitating, rehabilitating people who had lost hope, who had not had access to go to school, who had no skill because they were running because of the war. So that really gave hope and that restored lives in the northern part of this country, of, of Uganda. So, as ESCOM Uganda, on behalf of the board, the management and staff, we are delighted to be here to celebrate a life of a person who impacted many lives, not only in South Africa, but across the country, continent of Africa, and more especially in Uganda. We believe that the seeds that she had planted, she has planted, will continue to grow 
and it is our duty, me and you who are still alive, to make sure that that legacy continues into the future. Um, I know the program's director is short on time. I would like at this point, uh, I don't know, uh, I mean, uh, <laughs> Thozama, do you have that message you wanted to give? Okay, thank you. Yeah, so um, I want to say our deepest condolences to the family, but stay comforted because her life was short but impactful. It was short but meaningful. It was short but full of purpose. And that is the best thing. What matters is not how many years you live, but how many lives have you touched. And Okwanda touched a lot of lives. I used to joke with her because I had difficulties pronouncing the, the last name, Mgeni. In Uganda, we have the version called Mangeni. We just add the A after the, a, after the M. So I would say, Miss Mangeni, I would use the Ugandan version. And she would not be offended, she just laughs about it. Because she knew I had difficulties pronouncing the last name. So on that note, I would like to say, may the soul of Nokwanda rest in eternal peace. Thank you very much. La li kasi la ke ulu nege ulu gile wena la pa la li kasi la ke ulu nege Ladies and gentlemen, my name is um, Maidi Makovela. Menokwanda was a mother to me. She was a colleague. She was um, basically recently she was she was everything to me because um, I've lost my mom in 2020. So she's been a pillar. She's been my strength. Um, I've also lost a, a dear friend, I think two months ago. She was incredible. You know, she's, I, I don't even have words. I think every speaker who has said she is a remarkable woman, she, she's all dead that everybody has said. So it's just what I've said. Um, I've greeted you all in the name of Jesus. Um, the family, you have not, you are not alone. Um, I've also lost a mom. I, I was, I think on our last trip, we went to, to Lesotho. We were actually sharing a room and she was in so much pain. And I was sleeping next to her, and I will say, hear her morning during the night, and I'll, I'll ask, "May are you okay? And she'll say, my dear, all is well. All is well. That's what she was speaking. She was speaking healing. She, was, she never spoke death. She never spoke of any negativity towards God. That's how... He loved, she loved God. She embraced, even at her, her lowest point, she was saying to me, mighty God is on the throne. And he never leaves. Uh, I'm, I'm a Shangani, but he, <laughs> she used to, sell, to call me uh, Mama Kube. She can't spell my name correctly. I'm, I'm Makubela. She said, Mama Kube. 
when she called me. I know she's in good spirit and then we, whatever situation I was in, if I had problems, even though she was in pain, but she would pray for me. And I would be so surprised, like, this woman, I'm the one who's supposed to comfort her, but she'll be like, no, my dear. She'll give me the word, she'll go, do you have the Bible where you are? I'm like, yes, ma'am. Go and open this verse, and she will start preaching, and then we'll pray. That was the woman she was. So today we gather not in sorrow, but in gratitude for the life of beloved co-worker, Menokwanda. In her time with us, Nokwanda touched our lives in ways that words alone cannot express. Menokwanda was more than just a co-worker. She was a shining example of dedication and unwavering commitment. Her work ethics was second to none, and her passion for her task was infectious. No challenge was too great, and no project too daunting for her to tackle. She approached each day with a positive spirit that uplifted all of us. As a mother, as I will call her Menokwanda, loved extended not only to her family, but also to her, co her, to her colleagues. She embraced us, her extended, sorry. <sighs> she embraced us as her extended family and her nuturing during our, mo our most trying moments. Her laughter was a source of life, and her smile, a beacon of hope. Nokwanda had a unique gift, the ability to connect with people effortlessly. She formed deep and lasted friendship, and her kindness knew no bounds. Her present had a way of bringing us all closer together, fostering a sense of unity and togetherness. Today we say goodbye to you, May, in the physical sense. But her memory, but your memory will forever reside in our hearts. Her legacy of hard work, love, and camaraderie will continue to inspire us. In honor of our dear co-worker, let us remember her not with tears of sorrow, but with smiles of gratitude for having shared a part of her life with our lives with such an extraordinary soul. She, I will say when she started working um, in Isaac in 2020, um, 2018, I think in November, me and her, we didn't see eye to eye in 2018 because she brought change into the company. And as, as human beings, we are afraid of change. When, when a person brings change, then we start seeing her as she thinks she's better. But we didn't see her vision. She has a vision for Isaac. She has a passion for Isaac. Whatever she did at ESCOM, she wanted to bring that to us. So, but at the time, we couldn't understand. We couldn't relate because we saw her as an enemy at the time. But at, at times goes by, you know, I spoke to my God and I said, Lord, I don't know what this woman is all about, but can you make me see what is beyond? Because what I'm seeing now, I see an arrogant woman. I don't understand her ethics. I don't understand what she's saying to me. Because she will actually, everything that I did, she will find a wrong thing in that. But today, 
when I look back, she made, the, she made me the woman I am today. I am strong because of this woman. I, you know, I'm a professional because of her. And I thank God that I've made her. And I thank God that in everything that she was in Isaac, now which is Triple AG, which was launched in, in Mombasa in July. And it was not going to be possible if it was not for her. Even in her pain, she made sure that the launch happened. Even though she didn't sleep with discomfort in her stomach. But she will say, my dear, I will make sure that the constitution is signed on the day of the launch. That was the woman she was. She wanted perfection in everything she touched. She was, I think as everybody has said, she wanted to, 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 to make everything perfect. She gave it her all. Everything when she went, she gave it her all. We are actually preparing to host a conference in, in, Lesotho, in Lesotho in December. And believe you me, even though she was in this pain at her last days, she made sure that she did the program without fail. She worked overnight. And I will call her in the morning, how may? You need to rest. And she will say to me, I know, my dear, but this has to be perfect. We have to do this. And I hope to all my colleagues in Zambia, we make this conference a success in her honor because she wanted to, it to be a success. Even though we said together and I spoke negative and I said, oh, my, my no I don't see this conference happening. And she was like, no, my dear. This conference will happen in the name of Jesus because Lord is on the throne. Because he never leaves. So to the family, I'm saying my deepest condolences. I love you all. She loved you with Mkadi, Siwe, Sita. She embraced you each and every day. She talked about you, Nzika. Your stress, when you stress her, when you, when you don't do what she expects you to do, but she still loved you unconditionally. And she still wanted you to be successful. Please don't disappoint her. Nzika, Gabela, Utuam. I'm not disappointed, my mom. Name him Tata and Jengu, Mama. Make her proud. Make sure whatever she wanted you to be, Ube Leonto. I'm not Kosa, but I'm trying because I was. <laughs> I spent um, a lot of time with her and she was teaching me Kosa, even the Bible, she'll read me in English and also say, you know in Kosa, as um, um, uh, Ume Cindy was saying, it sounds better because Kosa is raw. It, 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 I don't know whether it, it, it says the words as they are. When a thing, I don't know what I like, about, I, I, I think I've learned to embrace Kosa because of, of Meno Kwanda. So in that, I say, may rest in peace, for your spirit lives in our lives. You touched. Thank you. We are checking if the third speaker is in the house. If not, we move on with the program. Hallelujah. All right, I'm going to assume that the third speaker is not in the house. And uh, we are now going to...
call upon two church reps, and after that, we're going to go to the Word of God. As I said, by quarter past one, we are handing over this program to Apostle John. So let us call upon the church reps. The two church reps that are mentioned here, it's Betty Similane together with Tenji We Ngumbela. Let us preach a song as we welcome both of them to the stage. Amen. Church reps. Sikonda ekaya niti nina Masinga tie kinga luto Asikolo ala nanga Asikolo ala asombo Bonka <laughs> Eh, and she's a woman of a heart of gold. She's a yoga no wonder, be be a mgela wong umund. Began in his yoga jess. Who just was an a cat to mund. Got a bigger hamba and gena. Now like two again were called. Why in Jalus is no wonder. Who's totally like an artist, see Lena pants. One born and I'm getting if I'm getting a bit close to her. So I'm born and I'm cooling, cooling, cooling. I as I'm a peg of pants, I'm a me, but in a me, I'm fagile and lining. Big a salon, Uganda. So, umaba kulumala u Ingrid ngiyamazi, imoto mioni ngiyayazi, ichi inja ngiyayazi, kampala ngiyayazi, because of usis no gwanda. Azanga bone, njongo banyishu kuta, azanga bone uguti, si lo uganga ganani. Kwa tu bone, ukona kubonile gimu, shoni pe unkulu unkulu o gimu. Ngwaba iskates ningi si shanga niswe, Hallelujah. So, ya kumbula guti. Uksanga na guetu ukube koniskati sisikone with bank e kula. Washo ngelini langa wa organize the trip. Wagune kaya KZN eline nkinga yoguti baya felu anjalo. Wa organize wati sisinkela guti organize abo mama bok tandas. Sahamba saye KZN sayo tandas. Kwa ngamu gugufa. So I remember Lini Langa, a Conala, a Josie, Guagno Sister Sevens and I, why a social good to Vumbuganjo Milo, Wushe Langa Paga Tentli. What in Kalas is organized? See ye end our net is the Gunogunale Simoya Puma and Aguma TV in the Bayako. 
niyakumbulu kuti safika kilelo kaya, unkulu kulu wenza umsebenz, la wangamuga umlilo. So nya mazu sisno gwanda, engu mtandazi. She's a prayer warrior nge bela. Hallelujah. Hey, guningi nko se amenga gusho. Hey, esi zule gugo na ye. Niyakumbula guti, Manje si ukine ugu ugu ukuluma na minges nine begu i Monday. Enkumbula uguti ukulumile ngago ute sisi diabule la guti iwit bank indi zele na kina kina ngagundi zala nandi pe pagua zegua bangoku so a a a zangu kabangu tusho la mazi ngoba uya hamba Wednesday kora umasega sega sektiwa uhambi le. Kwa figa ki mkuti, oh, kushuti bega bonga. Ati ndia bonga, mawitpeng. Kukuti, nindi kulisile. Nandi pepa. Andi nyega, andi nyega, nga kuse kube ngoku. Na manje, sisi, ndia bulela. So, azange nkabange, vele, umo ingwe luwa leta manje la mazu. Kukuti, uya kumbula logo kutukshilo na. So, nshukuti vazalwane, i last trip ya minaye, ibe last year, siya e KZN. Ati sisi, nkela kuti saambe. Sie e gumfundi sulukwe ni abonga gutu kona pagatguetu. Sisi sio gwenzani ati ai sisi kufiga guti asiye. So ni akumbula guti saha ambasa figa gumfundi sulukwe. Asa zinami na masbinge la nti na masaz guti wa isibela kora sila na so nshu guti kugo gonke abe yigo. Sia ni atandu guti na minisbonge le guti ni besa tuze na e futi. Hey, angazi kuti bazalwane ngati nukuning, kuninga kwenzile, ezi mpilo nzetu, singa bantu base with bank. Njongo ba usis princess uge wakulu malange memorial service, uguti beba nikela, anikela ngalendlela. Ikuni sol kwele kutu nkulu nkulu aga wadla mandlo umundu. Hallelujah. So nzoti nje kubantu wana baga sisno gwanda, kubegani nentlonipo anshie na yu, niyaklonipa, figela payana Monday, in the learning tree tongue, are you? Yea, I manga listen below yam. Ogutinje, Logan Shea, Naguna, go see where Gutin Sonipe, Ninga Glassy, Um Tandas and Shea, the uncle, the Tandu Kuluma, eh, at you sit us so Usutu Ui prayer partner yak. So, one good Usita, she's a prophet, Yala Pendlin. Nias Gutum Kum Tandas was a Kubega. No masibon inati atandu nkulu nkulu nga lenja li. Kini so liko ele kuti. Kubalegi le kuti skuli su mtoa na bantoa na ngente leo kubange. Uyabo kuyo tsekba kuli le banga sugi guyo inkosi nbosu. Greetings to the angel of the house. All the pastors and pastors wives. The guests, the visitors and the family at large. I greet you all in the name of in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. amen. Uh, I met Sis Nogwanda in 2016 at Alexander AOG. Allow me to express myself in Tosa. The reason why I'm saying this is because I want to say, uh, I, I want, you know, when you express yourself in your language, you say whatever you want to say the way you want it, amen. amen. Bazalwana usis no kwanda ke Jebas and Chilo Tintibena Alexander go twenty sixteen. And yes, Banza Ibeka Ganja and into eighty sati bana ganja. Because Kwagi Gwenze Kesasi is the choir members so by two e Alexander. And the Maslow Sisufiga Shala Pekagwa, Nam Kandi Fige Elia was of Figan into Figan Shala Pekagwake. It was a lean in the Sensei Galen to whom Pagatuam no sis no kwanda. Kwa 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 that's get to us flat like I'm trying to get languages. God, I'm being good to I'm cool. On the roots, as strong as in the layer, I'm clubbing. Any branches as strong. Zogu holder, whoever 
comes her way. Usus no wonder, Obem Nakekela umtu. Usus no wonder, Ebe Pula Pula. It doesn't matter how foolish it is what you're telling her. God, I was a Pula Pula into a quatting. I said, Yes, no wonder, ten out and Mamma, Mangum signed a goof, Mangum's wild talent, Bizantin, Mangum's cake. Usus no wonder, Uyenzile in Conzo, Yogunikela. Aganikelanga, a band in Kupela. Unikele na kutes individuals. Njengi bandi meklenda awonte ndi benefitile ebo mini bukasi sinokwanda. Kwimi nikelwa yenzi leo sinokwanda. I'm from Port Alfred, flying in the air, and accommodated in the BNB. Usu sinokwanda, diambe na yesi vele polu kwana. Eyo nikela, konu siso mdale Alexander Kulelo, mama wake. Mnandandi zisherela nte innocent lintinga zinto eti. Usi sinokwanda uza itatela pezu lulento. Sivela kwa pulu kwa na nusu sinokwanda. Ufige enzi krosari emangal sayu emzin. Usi sinokwanda ukrosa kwa uluweth. Ninga itinga kwa kuturka ngana kwa uluweth. Aka nanda abu kutungu baana. Aka nanda abu kutu velani. Usi sinokwanda ka uye kwa ke. Ka umvizitile kwa kubanento nukonba he. I wanda ka isiga kwa mu. Tisa kwa zinuki enza lento andenze la yona. Ugu prepare sela izi ntue zinga apa kwa kukonba he andi andanda. Bandas no Mandes the Ganjan. Uber no tando, Olu unconditional, Usus no Snoganda. Usus no Ganda, best straight talk. That's what I loved most about her. Ukubanga, but Ukin, Bus no Ganda, like Telelinto, Uzam Kalela, Um Kalana, Vela Chuz, Uba Vela Tule, than Uba a witness into it, Tileo, Eyasma, I could write. Jambula Lutico, who made our pants to cross. Because in the next days, the end is fun, the layer bomb in the bam, the bullella would check on a lent to eighty. Cousins on gint as in the layer. I quintain palam legatin over. The coin is twenty seven thousand as in the lay. Got a losses, Ubenga lad, a benga lad in the cooler, a talent in yam, and the tangle is in those lives. A lala up a pet in yam, Ussis no wonder. Usi sinu wanda, uya yon kintu, ete tuwe apa, dilingu ina ilpile ulayu. Usi tandile, undi tandile, usi tandile, so nge ndiwa kwa tetuwe apa. Dimbule laga kuluti kwa that, sorry bandu anabam, I'm not crying because, but I'm crying because I thank God that I met this type yom tu ebo minimum. Usi sinu wanda nge ntu guza keso kebela, undi faunele. What he mangums, eh, is in Zambia. Who pieces it? The Mamma says Zambia. I ain't a corner. Uza wamba nini, and conbandos and pin in the army. Eh, Yabab Shungul and twenty three nam. The conbandia mass in the la committed name seven in Wake. Galogu nam, the band the Lela Peco Lindsay, the Lely Pacam, bending out in the seven says Zambia. Gang, gang, mangums, tandas, Sazawenza Lengo. Mangums, tandas, so when I lay at Utenuti, Gobutandas, you are Tinuti, and you can't put tandas in the Gagum and Kalin to put to ten. So I beg you, call me Tangendelas on Gag Tandas and Bunyan the Lake, Agus Noguanda, Uguba Yens, I lend off from Bowens, Gobuza, Buza, Abuza, and Doba, we are found the CP scripture besitting the church and the Mangums, Utikus Nati and Gobum, Gas Noguanda, Banduanabam, and the Mazun Tigas and getting born. God and their base, a bonke, a banya bantu, and a patun singers and in Timbon. I couldn't have been Sigella Langatin Toba, a Usheril and Amis Trent Zen, Susnuganda, a Daytana Lento eighty, a bantu and a nam dinabo, a bantu and a banana litale lithe, a bantu and a banana's witnesses. God, I couldn't have been Tangatin to eighty, Usnuganda be Bambela Lagues in twenty strong cause. A tambona, Yambona Mangums, Banban, Yambon. Kabela S in the Kabela Kamu Teta Nai before S. Zambia, Ebene Pongo Loba, Uso Tatum Tanake, Uso Bangu Kreha, Amse a Thailand, Amen. Apo Afuna Bayo celebrate her corner, E. E. Graduation Yak. But guess Bula Lutu Koguti, Sis Noganda Nufun Siluk Tandaza, Sis Noganda Nufun de Siluk Pila, Sis Noganda Unipilele, she left no stone unturned. When the show into eighty, Nifumana, a bright future. Bambelela, Nisita, Sita Ukubize, a Macasaman, Tata Macasaman, Ninsing houses, no wonder. Sissy Ugatin, the glow to you. Oak Tanin, the Take the 
bait on and run with it. Niazaz and Tan Funsezona, Nibambele Kuzo, Sison in Reta Ebumin. Us in this candy cabella, eh? The next scripture in Tan who share a nun, who met to chapter five, who verse six, no verse eight. The Funa in Kizoyenu, it call in Nagakumbi, Nabaku Sungo, got an equal in the Saz into eighty. Nobas is a con in Sabin, Abanyeke will be red chart, Abanye. By a wamba in a cafe garret. God, I couldn't have my leg at into eighty. A wamba, unento yazi into eighty. Masiti, Jengusa and Bilenge, Nibamba, Lelen twenty eighty bandanabam. Uti umetu chapter five. Uve six uti. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Usus no wonder you couldn't be long as the Langati Lonto. Wherever she is, she'll make sure that Unishia nisenda win when Zubulungisa kangango kwanga banako. Utu verse eight: Blessed are pure in heart, for they will see God. Ngogo siteta ne konde inango age kusus no kwanda apa kuto pumle emise benzini ake ika malengo osu Yesu malituni swe. Bantu anabam zibakoni in differences aninga bantu, but kubaluleki ile okuba. Ni solve vessels into then you move on. Ninga bambele lent to any. Emma Kayage, Nanting was his lalin. Emma Kayage got his. Ka Utelu Kunolunye, Ka Petu Kunolunye, Kulula Ulpula. Got a tawi bundle, the Tibene Zinins, Aglulango goes pula. Mambele landing loan to Gabantanabam, Nimcons or Tikawenu, Cossios win Sigel. Amen. Let us share this and share this because it. Thank you. We are tracking behind a little bit, Bazalani. But Siabonga, we with your cooperation, take all the cigarettes. Uh, we would like to take the offering uh, as a worship team. Uh, Just for two minutes, won't come to me now. Wapa pizza, bongo no wa. Wapa keli kana wa. Wati fuli esa. Bongo no no wa. Wapa pizza, bongo no wa. Wapa keli kana wa. Wati fuli esa. Bongo no no wa. Bongo kena. Bongo kena. Tata kena. Bongo kena no wa. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ebe fana no no wa usis no kwanda. Ewu fuli lumkumbi. For everyone to come. Hallelujah. Jingu mamu faa kundi sindisiwe. Dia mtandu yesu. Amen. Dia bulisi mpostile. Dia babulisi otatabetu. Dia babulisi abefundi sibonke. Ifemele ya kwa mgeni. Keka male nkosu yesu. Amen. We are celebrating a life worth and well lived. Amen. 
Sisa kwenza ke inkonzo yomnikelo. Njemba sisa kwenzi inkonzo yomnikelo. Usisino kwanda waze kiva. Ebe nikelo usisino kwanda umangale. Ngoba she understood uba ukuza be inja iyo. Utiko kofuneka nikele ngo yesu. Hallelujah. Ngo kuge njemba sisa unikela nje. Sisa ubiza bane cash. Sisa ubiza bane zbi. Abaza funa aba swipe. Futi sisa ufaga i account number. Aba funu kwenza ma transfers. Kota pam kwa basi nikele kukona mazwi andi sigele layo. U Luke chapter 6 u verse 38. Uti give. For it shall be given back to you. Kamanya mazwi kasi nikele. Asi nikele ngoba kukoni si tingo kwa mgeni. God was in Nigella because we have needs. Hallelujah. Tandi Nigella and Gale Hat. Kungoba Kukoni City, Ngoba Faku. If we can understand, Ubaka Nigelu Fulela Wena, you are doing yourself a favor. You are not doing a favor to the person that you are giving to. Hallelujah. We to Tiko. Telani ni zopiwa. Funani, kongozani ni zofulewa. Kukwani zintu ezi nga telu wangu mlomo. Ezi telu wangu mnikelo. Kukwani minyangu wenga furu wangu kutanda za kupela. But when you give, utitiko na asisiti ngo samu. Hallelujah. Titala ke siya asba si san nigela. Asi nigela li femeli ya kwa mgeni. Koto asi nigela li buti kwa chonge tina. Titala si vala metro standards. Ba weka meni lengo su yesu. Wase nazarete. Si alifa nko si zwilako. Elitu we should give. And whatever we give shall be given back to us. Si zaku weka meni liga yesu. Naba bantu anabako besaza unigela. Basigelele nga banye nga banye. Uya zazi siti ngo zabo. Meet their needs. According to your riches in glory. Auloko kika loku wena. Banga koka bantu. Banga chika bantu. Koto wena ulilwi koki. Kasi nigela kuwe. You will give back to us. Enkosibawo ke kamaliga Yesu. Amen. Tikala ki worship team ichingoma. E e e e chisayo. Mamelan ke bangolo lom nikelo au sali apaku apostle. Lom nikelo au sali apesanti. Uya hamba lom nikelo uya ku family ya kwamgeni. I account number. Nizaibona ba ne cell phone number njembe ivezi wenje ap. Ipi se ivezi. Ia ku S mgeni. U S mgeni ke ngu si we mgeni. The first daughter ka sisino kwanda. Tikala ki worship team sabele lingo mechisayo. Then ke ngu si ze song ke si zo unikela. Amen. Na tiana silibona ka.
mehlo sibonga umnikelo phambi kobani isuke sisi cela sivala mehlo sibonga umnikelo naba abanye abaseza nanti yana silibona nga Siyabulela thixo wethu namandla wonke othi wena uthanda umnikelo ophuma enhliziwe nechwayitikileyo ngoba umnikelo it is a matter of a heart enkosi thixo wethu basikelela abantwana bakho ngegama lenkosi yesu amen Tiniselani basalwane sisasifike emaphakathe ni Shall we clap hands and celebrate God this morning? We want to extend our greetings once more time to everybody that is here, the ministers of the gospel, pastors, the leadership of this house, elders and deacons, mothers, fathers, be greeted in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We are grateful to God who has ushered us even up to this moment in our program. We are thankful to all the speakers that have cooperated with us in making sure that we run this program smoothly. Shall we give them a round of applause? <laughs> and to my co-MC, uh, Brother Luyanda, thank you very much, my brother. May God richly bless you. Let's celebrate him as well. <laughs> now time has come for us to go to the Word of God. But before we go to the Word of God, we want to worship God. We want to take time and worship God and tell him who he is. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the beginning and the ending. There is no other God that can be compared with him. Sisputuma is in our midst. We are going to give her the stage just to render worship songs. And I'm going to ask all of us for a moment to take time and to really worship God. If it means stand on your feet, please stand on your feet so that you can give him the worship that he deserves. Simbulela, even about the life of Umamunokwanda, we are saying thank you to God for giving us such a gift in our lifetime. Shall we take it upon our feet and we call upon Osis Putuma. Immediately when she is done, we are going to welcome Apostle John Ngabesha as we stand.
second all of us and each one of us has the right to approach the closed throne of grace for one minute if not less give him the honor he deserves in your own words say something to your God in your own language. Tetanje notiko umzuzwananje. Just for a second. Say something to your God. Worship him. Thank him for who he is. For the God he is even in this season. Thank you, Jesus. be seated in the name of Jesus Christ. Greetings everyone in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Sitandu bulisa kwi family yakwa mngeni. Eh isihlobo nezalamane. All the colleagues, the friends, the neighbors from near and far. We greet you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. We also pay special tribute to Sis Nogwanda's children, her siblings, and all those that are closely knitted with her as a family in Jesus' name. Amen. I also recognize amongst us the priesthood, um, ministers of the gospel of Jesus Christ, irrespective of which denomination they may come from. We want just to acknowledge you and we thank God for your presence in this moving ceremony. Amen. Allow me to ask two of my leaders who are present here today even though time appears to have caught up with us. One of the lessons I learned long time ago as a program director, if I'm ahead of time, I will never tell the audience I am. Because there is a dangerous tendency of time just catching up with you when you least expect. Uh, so they must always be on their toes. Now we in the priesthood must now be on our nails, not our toes, uh, because time is gone, and we have to exercise discipline. But Sifuna Lamato Dagatiko Atojueyo Anebanga Aliambe Nosis Nogwanda. The teaching team member, which is the apostolic body of our beloved movement in the Back to God, in Assemblies of God, is represented here today by none other than Pastor Ndombela Lukwengu. He hails all the way from KZN, spent some time as a minister over our sister here in the Vidbank Assemblies of God some time ago. And I think it is befitting that he says a few words to the family to offer them some comfort as the Lord may direct him. But also with him, is a leader of our movement in the Back to God, Pastor Tamim Mavimbela, who had occasion to speak in the memorial service 
arranged by Triple AG, as he did speak yes, the day before yesterday at the memorial service here, speaking powerful words that gave the family and all of us comfort. He is the deputy chairperson of the Back to God movement in the Assemblies of God in Southern Africa. And he is indeed, at the moment, pastoring Alexandra uh, uh, Assembly of God. May I please ask your pardon that they do come and share a few minutes and say a few words um, before I may minister. And without forgetting a very crucial player, Pastor Fagu, who is in Delport Assembly of God. He was the one that walked the longest of the last mile of our dear sister, Nogwanda, though her last days really were spent in this congregation. But I want to recognize him. Uh, he must perhaps be the first one to say a few words in a minute or two, then pass on to uh, Pastor Ndombela, then pass on to Pastor Mavimbela. And I'm going to ask them to all come at the same time. In the name of Jesus. Now, ministers know how to be disciplined. Let's give them some love. <laughs> Obonana kona kona si si obonan esulwini si o esulwini tina. just want to say these few words to the family. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. Amen. Tuba uh, is saluted to the angel of the house. Ushweme Apostle Mwebeshe, Ngeka Malikose. Ea befundisi, ea befundisi gazi, friends and colleagues, ea zigasquash, ea the family of Fagu, o tashagandayegi, abashamba ngububende. Eh, siyabonga kakulu. Eh, shuwe meguti stole lesi slot. Eh, sibonga reception o snike zayona. Eh, silapa. Si zegui send off ka squash. Eh, u squash to me. U wash u lakta la guba nbe gumfundis. Pese nungu brother wake. Uge one tattoo squatching up Eastern Cape, wa watu for many farmers, some way a stateram. It is squashing young boy all rounder. Uzainza ni farm. Utind and zelu, oh brother, wam na bantagwe to a bagua zoo babies with something. Moba begay tandy familiake. Eba tanda bantona back. Eh. Sizo tige siwe ne, e, ne sibling zako. Our God is still in control. Yeah. We are not alone. Yeah. Uto munye, e, we lower primary in Ale Makaya. E, Any educator and guess about one e homework. Uguti but draw away, it train. 
Bamba Gabantuana be excited. Quabe Conabantuana, as a submit, a good by drawer, Ubon Utaban Yanga to Velo, a tatty train way back. Quaba Cona Lomtuana office, what to a banjumka. What to teach her, Yenile Abanyabantuana, but serious, but spend them more time to draw a train. Utilom Tuana, no teacher. The train is gone. Ulai Nilo. Tizoti Uskwash is gone. But in Zila, Kasquash will remain there. Ugu Fagu selfish. Uguba. Utate umtonje. Anyway, abantu abanje abafi bayalala. Abantu abanje abafi bayarilocator. Usquash urilocated. Ujob uke wafumana ma punches. Apo utiko usatani, ute utiko usatani, agam teste. Wawafumana ma punches, but wafelwa infuyo, wafelwa ngabantu wana, u, 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 yopi wati ndeza ndize, emshabeni, ya upindela ndize, wati kama, diga yova, maltunye isu. Eee, we secular world, we are a champion once you release the punches. But we spiritual world, we champion once you receive the punches. Uguluile, uguloguse, ukolo walkina, na ulinde lisisaba, soblungisa, God bless you all. A special greetings to Mgeni family, the siblings, the children, Ziga Mama. Greetings in a special manner to Apostle John Lubeshe, pastors that are here, friends, I think it's proper to say, all protocol observed. Thank you, Apostle, for your generosity. Indeed, I had an opportunity on Thursday to minister. I was not expecting again to come and stand here. However, we have come to say good night to this warrior. Hallelujah. Paul says, for me to live is Christ, but to die is gain. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. It was a gain. Hallelujah for Paul to die. Malibongi Kamalengos. He lived in Bilokolo. Hallelujah. He gave it all to the Lord. Malibongi Kamalengos. It is a gain because. Where she is going, no pain, no sorrow, no stress. Again, to meet with the veterans, the warriors up there, or porn, and others. We are Dela when I saw up. We family be comforted. Tomorrow in the morning, we're going to meet with her. Thank you, man of God. Um, one more time, I ask you to stand. Hymn number 20. Closer. Ndiya kolwa kutiko isona mandla onge Umdali wezulu no mtlaba Nangu Yesu Christu nya 
that has given words of comfort and indeed we recognize and are very grateful to God for the wonderful words shared from various speakers some join in, in online electronically to indeed share testimony about their knowledge of this gentle giant woman a heroine of faith who has, a, who has accomplished many feats both in corporate, in industry, in the enterprise world, but also in the faith world as it was in family. So we thank God indeed for the great work he has done through her. Amen. Allow me then, as everybody else may have spoken, either for an organization, a family, a structure, or some other entity, that I have the unenvious task of speaking for God himself. And you pray with me that the little that the Lord has shed in my heart may indeed reach you and do the intended work by God the Father. Amen. I will call your attention in real terms to two scriptures, two verses. In bereavements, I like to read one verse. In my sermons at church, I read a couple. I will help, by the help of the Holy Ghost, try and limit myself to these two. King David writes in Psalm 139, verse 14, and he says the following. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. He again writes 
not him this time, but Matthew, the tax collector. I do suspect, and I speak with a disclaimer, that Matthew may have been a chartered accountant since his occupation was of tax collection. It seems to me that uh, a number of scholars accept that he might have worked for a SARS of that world. And many chartered accountants are indeed congregated here today. So I suggest that they might very well hear better from their own peer. After all, you were trained from the same lens. But he does say this in the 25th chapter, only the 21st verse. And interesting, he speaks on something that he should be okay with because of his training. I have yet to meet an accountant. All accountants I know don't like to spend money. God will care. Amen. So this is what the 21st verse says. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. May the good Lord bless the reading of his word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Of course, in Matthew, it begins with, in that this chapter on the verse that talks about Jesus sharing the, the story of the ten virgins, five of whom had oil awaiting the bridegroom, five of whom did not have oil, and were caught in the last hour. For they had not prepared for the coming of the groom, yet they were saying they are waiting for the groom. And then when Jesus, who is depicted as the groom here, arrived without notice, whilst we may all say we are waiting for death, none of us are quite prepared for death. Whilst we may all say we are waiting for the second coming of Jesus, I am not sure how many of us are quite prepared because he will come in the twinkle of an eye and an agenda that was on the offense will come to a halt for something majestic will have happened in the universe. I suspect that if, as Dr. Mangani says, it is the Soccer World Cup, Perhaps it's the finals, the game of billions that's followed by so many across the globe. Like we are going to watch tonight the Springboks in the Rugby World Cup. As a matter of fact, let us accept that rugby as we well like it is nothing compared to football in terms of following. So when you talk the Soccer World Cup, you're literally talking billions that are following that match. But the day that Jesus comes unannounced, for not even the angelic beings know when he will come. Not even the Son, the Bible records, knows. But God the Father knows when he will send him back. When he does send him back and release him, the Bible tells us he will stand ajar in the universe on space with no force of gravity that can pull him down. After all, he gave us the foretaste when he walked on water and the force of gravity could not pull him down. So what is it for him to stand ajar in the very creation he is the chief creator of? And he stands ajar. And as he stands ajar, allow me to imagine all the telescopes that we have that study the universe as they depict a picture of something extraordinary happening in the universe. And the attention is twisted to check on the shining bright star that Jesus is as the morning, the bright morning star. And he stands ajar. As he stands ajar, the Bible says that all those that died in the Lord, that are buried like our sister we shall bury and many other heroes and heroines of faith, will be the first to rise up from their tombs and they will be caught up like a magnet catches little pieces of steel into the 
Hey. And join our Lord. Those of us by the grace of God. Who like the five virgins that were waiting with oil. Waiting for the bridegroom to come. Will also simultaneously be caught up in the air. And we will join Jesus in the air. Paul says that we may not know. How we shall look. But one thing for sure. We shall surely look like him. And I want to imagine Paul's assurance of how we shall look may be somehow taken from the moment of transfiguration that Jesus experienced on the mountain. Jesus called from those that are supposed to have been dead, Moses and Elijah, and called them on the mount. And the Bible says they change form. And Jesus himself was like a shining bright light, transfigured into what he shall become. Transfigured into what those that died in the Lord waiting in paradise may already be looking like. In other words, this word transfiguration, I am told, is taken from a root Latin term, which simply means and is borrowed from this word that you must be familiar with, metamorphosis, which simply means change from one form to a highly exalted form. Change from one form to a highly exalted form. All right, let's break it down. Metamorphosis, as you will remember at your high school studies, and I do hope that you did not just do it to pass so that you may understand. It simply means, by illustration, a caterpillar changing into a butterfly. In other words, metamorphosis equates to Transfiguration. Transfiguration is the foretaste of what we shall look like. When Jesus comes back, we shall be transformed. We shall be transfigured. All of us who died in the Lord, all of us who will be with the Lord, raptured, and the whole world will be in awe as we are transfigured from one lower form to a higher glorified form. Therefore, death no longer has the ability for those that die in the Lord to cause a curse to be manifest. Instead, it becomes a bridge to the metamorphosis moment of transfiguration. It equates to an opportunity to be first in line to join Jesus when he reigns. So we are thankful to God that we have this heroine of faith. But my focus this morning is on what David may have really meant. And I want to tell you up front, and I put up a disclaimer, it's going to come unconventional, unorthodox. It is coming against everything that you've studied in theology. Because I respectfully acknowledge what they say, but allow me to give you my sincere revelation. I praise thee, David begins to say, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. May we just dissect for a second these two words, fearfully and wonderful. In the original Hebrew, which is what language the Bible in the Old Testament is written in. It's no fascination with Hebrew. As a matter of fact, I'm very fascinated with my uh, vernacular, which is Tosa. I'm extremely fascinated with it. I choose to speak in English because the audience I have forces me to carry everybody with. It's Yare. It simply means with moral fear, with reverence. With our. In other words, when we were created, there was awe. When we were created was reverence. 
When we were created, there was fear morally. Therefore, when he says, I am fearfully made, he says, I am made out of extreme awe. Augustine, one of the fathers of faith, has this interesting thing to say, and I want to quote. Men go abroad to wander at the heights of the mountains, at the huge waves of the sea, and the long courses of the rivers, and the vast compass of the oceans, secular motions of the stars, and they pass by themselves without wandering. I will say it again because some may have caught it a little bit in slow motion. We go to holiday. We go to vacation. We travel the world. We go to the Hillamers. We go to the south. We go to the north. We go to the west as we go to the east. We go even underground as we try and even reach the moon. We wonder and say how great thou art. But we forget to observe that this singular, outstanding accomplishment of God in creation is called man. It beats everything that you have come across that looks majestic. It beats every high mountain that you celebrate like the table mountain as a matter of fact. I have seen several terrible mountains where I come from in the Pondoland. I get surprised why this one is celebrated in Cape Town. That's just besides the point. But the point I'm making is that there are so many beautiful wonders of the world. But it appears to me that the greatest wonder that has ever been created by God is none other than a human being. If I had time, which is not my privilege today, and also to be careful at the risk of this luminary that I hear, not to contradict myself, I would tell you a little bit about the anatomy of the human body. The little I will leave you with is that you are carrying 37.2 trillion cells. 37.2 trillion cells. In your body. If you go and study how the body functions, you will be amazed. As a matter of fact, there is simply no computer that has ever been manufactured that comes even close to the computer of the brain of the human being. Because you are simply fearfully and wonderfully made. You are such a design that after God created you, he could not create nothing anymore. He took a rest. Michelangelo, one of the greatest in art world, when he did his artwork, he will have certain paintings like the greatest that he has done and put them on auction if not on show and give them a price tag which you can bid for. But once he has done something, he does not think he can ever be able to outdo. He puts no price tag. Instead, he says this one is for display but not to be bought. Why? He does not believe it's possible to do something to outdo that. I suspect and I want to suggest to you that when God created a human being, he did not want to even try again. Why? He had for himself put together the masterpiece of creation. And then this interpretation, I don't even want to call it a doctrine because it is elevating it beyond what it deserves. That suggests that men were created first. It is a fallacy. It is not supported by proper scripture or theology. It is simply untrue. I'm afraid I did tell you we might just shock each other as we go because we are unconventional. Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 says, Then God said, let us create man. And then 26, 27, 28, he created them, male and female. 
the manifestation of a woman does not mean that she is only created then. She was created same time with men. Amen. So then, we accept that a woman was created at the same time with a man. Well manifesting later because of God's sovereign wisdom. So yare simply means with reverence, with awe. But now, wonderfully, is taken from Another term, pala, which simply means distinguished, separated, consecrated, made to be wonderful. In other words, you are not just a statistic by number. David had certain revelations from God. He even knew how to tell us that God even knows what number of hair you have. Please, don't take it simplicity. If you were combing this morning, those of you who still have the privilege, <laughs> and maybe some one piece of hair fell off, God Almighty in heaven has the exact number, 1,031 fell off this morning. That's how intimately he knows us. That's how much he cares. God is not interested in the duplicity of what we can become. God is interested in the singularity of what he has created. Amen. So he made you fearfully and wonderfully. From Charles Spurgeon to Matthew Henry to many other renowned Theologians of note that I completely respect and almost all the time receive. The focus becomes on us, the subject of creation, on this fearfully and wonderfully. And I'm not quite certain why they had that revelation, and I'm not disputing it. But I want to profiteer my own. It is God himself who was fearful. It is God himself in his fear of all who was in wonder in terms of what he was knitting together. Allow me to tell you why he would have been fearful. And on a different day, different time, I will expand on it, but I don't have time. Here is the fear of God. If you read Genesis without rushing for yourself not to minister to others, to minister unto yourself, you will without doubt recognize that Genesis 1 really talks of two things simultaneously. It talks of creation as it tells you of recreation. Because Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 opens as you would be able to recite, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth and it puts a full stop. It means there's nothing else coming, he's done. But then the very following verse says that the earth was formless and dark, void. Now, how is this God able to create something that is formless and dark? Allow me to suggest to you that there is an intervening issue that happened or factor. The only problem with the writers and the compilers of Genesis is that they were not chronological. It does not mean it is impossible to elicit the elements that open the ability to fit it in. If you go to Ezekiel, you will see. If you go to Isaiah, you will see. You will see how it was before. In other words, I'm saying to you, the problem that occurred is that sin fell and man caught it. After Lucifer, the greatest angel with others in the rank of archangel was caught in sin, chucked out of heaven, and sought to find a place which he could occupy. 
and entered through the snake which went to beguile Eve and Adam, and sin entered the world. At that point, the world which previously was delegated to this wonderfully created being at the time called Lucifer, was now caught in sin. Romans 8, Paul explains it. Even all creation is groaning for the revelations of the Son of God because there is a systematic decay of the earth arising from the moment of sin entering the universe. Even the universe is growing in pains. But God made a plan through Jesus Christ for regeneration. Now, the gap between verse 1 and verse 2 is not explained easily in Genesis, but you will find it as you go. Today is not the day for that. But I want to say to you, when God, who had previously given the superintendent status to Lucifer to be able to oversee his creation on earth, and Lucifer disappointed him. The Bible says it very clear. When he was created, he was created in perfection. Lucifer was the most beautifully created creature. He had the right of pass in heaven as it did on earth. That is why you will find him in Job coming there before God as part of the sons of God. And God asked, where do you come from? To and fro. Because God, as it is explained, never reverses what gift he gave you. Once given, irrevocably given to you. You can struggle with character, but gift will still be there. In other words, the issue is not the gift. The issue is character that bears the fruit. One day you will hear me if you have not heard me. If you want to see, just by way of illustration, the best preachers, look no further than a stock fell where there's a shebin. After one or two, and someone is a little bit high, they have a gift that they went off from. They begin a song and begin to preach a better pre sermon than you'll find on the pulpit on Sunday. Because the gift has not departed. It's the character that is not right. Therefore, there is no fruit to be eaten. So today, especially in the church, we suffer not because of gift. As a matter of fact, there's plentiful gift. The trouble is character that produces fruit. The same in the corporate world. There is no problem with the gift. As a matter of fact, there is no way, I said the other day, and I want to quote myself again, there is no way that there can ever be corruption unless someone who is corrupting himself or that person is, has the power to corrupt. You must first be in a position in order to exercise corruption. That is why many people are chasing us up and down for vote to put them in office. And they claim correctly that those that are in office are corrupt. Give them a chance to go in. We will be complaining about the same thing against them. Why? They have no ability to exercise corruption. Because they are out of power. The day you are in power, it's the exercise of power that determines. Because now it's no longer the gift, it's the character. Gift outside of character produces problems. But gift with character gives people joy. And I say to you then, God fearfully says to himself, let us call a meeting. We now need to create a masterpiece. And he calls the Father himself, the Son, Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost, in the Trinity and oneness of God to have a meeting. When he created the sun, the moon, the stars, when he created the earth, the planets of the world, when he created the galaxies in their billions, he never called a meeting. He, issue, he simply issued an instruction as Elohim. 
But when he had to make a masterpiece, he says, no, 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 hang on now. Can we hold the meeting? We are about to do something extraordinary. We are going to do a master class. We are going to do a masterpiece, rather. And he says, let us create man. And this is the two things about man. In our own image and after our own likeness. In other words, man that you are. And when I mean man, I mean woman or man. You carry the image of God. You carry the likeness of God. And please, again, allow me to caution you. When you look at the mirror, you're not looking like someone that looks like God. Sorry, 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 that's not true. What face does God carry? God is a spirit, John says. The issue about image and likeness has nothing to do with facial recognition. It has everything to do with the in, inside DNA that allows you to perform extraordinary things that allow you to even, you know, science that's a science of notes because you defy the force of gravity. Now, when you hop onto a plane, you have faith that that thing won't drop midway through because someone did it. It is the in-being of God. It is the character of God to be able to create out of nothing something and bring it to being that it can be enjoyed. In other words, you carry, every one of us here without any fear of doubt, you carry the abilities special of God that no other creature can. Now, God delegated responsibility to Lucifer. Lucifer abused power. Lucifer was caught in sin, ejected from authority. Man was created, then man was given that new responsibility that previously was on Lucifer. Here is the point about the whole message today. When God is in fearfully creation, he is knitting you together, first and foremost to empower you with extraordinary capacity to do what you need to do. In other words, your commissioning by God for what you must do is done before you are formed. That's why Jeremiah in chapter 1 verse 5 says that before I formed thee in your mother's belly, I knew thee. God foreknows you before he forms you. The formation of God is not accidental. It happens as a result of what he knows. And in his knowledge, he's already given you the capacity to deliver what you need to deliver. Amen. Number two or three, I want to say, is that God is no business of duplicates. That's why each one of us sitting here without shadow of doubt, including Simon's twins, have no duplicate fingerprints. Because God knows you individually. And especially assigned you for a special task that no other person can perform except you. So when you fail God in his purpose for you, you failed the purpose of heaven. So allow me then to suggest to you, when God says fearfully, it means utitigo. Will this one also disappoint me? Not after I have empowered him with all the capacity he has. Not when he is the only one who can deliver this in his generation. So God, with reverence, with awe, with fear, puts you together. And gives you the extraordinary. That's why in your family you may be born by the same mother and the same father. You will still not have the same strengths and weaknesses. Because you are not really the result of the design of your parents. You are the result of the design of God. And God designed them and gave them stewardship over you. 
Genesis puts it very clearly when it says, when God had formed man out of dust, he breathed his, the breath of life into him, and the man became a living soul. In other words, allow me to suggest to you that when God had formed man in his, with his fingers, shaped him and put him there, man was not yet a human being. But when God breathed life into man, in other words, allow me to take it to this level, God takes off his spirit and deposits it to this body that is not living and from the moment the body lives and it becomes a living soul what does then that mean it simply means that what is inside of you is not you what is inside of you is God in you there is a piece of God you are, you are carrying therefore the responsibility to take care the responsibility to execute, the responsibility to ensure that the purpose of God, that God entrusted you with, is delivered, is important to note. Because God gave it to you trembling, allow me to say, that I am making this attorney, this advocate, this doctor, this scientist, this accountant, tremblingly, because this one will come with innovation that the world has never seen. This one will come with interpretation that anyone has never been able to be clear about. This one will enter doors that were closed because I've given him extra capacity, special measure. You have been fearful. But now wonderfully means distinguished. You are not just another number. You are special in the eyes of God. That's why David in Psalm 8 verse 4 asked the question, What is man that thou carest so much for him? Because when they looked at Lucifer, Lucifer carried in his former glory all the treasures of the world on him. He walked up and down before the throne of grace. He was, as the theologians tell us, one who could produce a hundred voices in one, a choir by himself. He was the most beautifully created creature. He was the light bearer. That is why Lucifer, before the fall of man and the sin was found in the universe, all the precious stones were on the surface of the earth. When he led the legion, of angels in angelic worship from heaven, moving down by way of a flight giving glory to God as the torch bearer. When he shone on the precious stones, they radiated beauty back to God in awe. Yeah. And when that moment came as it, it does many moments, the angelic beings in his company began to say, but no one is like you. That's why you must be very careful when they give you praises. Because pride precedes a fall. They elevate you so that you can be humbled. When you are being elevate, elevate, elevated, humble yourself all the more. Because it's not you, it's God through you. There was Lucifer who had established such a proud record and reputation. At the time of Lucifer being found with sin, cast away. Down with no place to host, finally found man. Lucifer was condemned by God eternally to hell. Lucifer has no opportunity to repent, even if he wanted to. He cannot repent because he's eternally condemned to a lake of fire. But when God created this masterpiece and it found he was found to have fallen from sin God could not rest God had to make another plan to recapture his favorite jewel that is how he took off himself 
the person of Jesus Christ to die the gruesome death of a cross of a criminal so that he may pay the price that man may be recaptured and reconciled with God. That's why the question is, what is man? Because it's asked against a particular picture. If Lucifer, who was so extraordinary, you did not care, but you said, I told you, you did not listen. Therefore, death it shall be by lake of fire. But when man dared to sin, he said, who shall we send? You are that important to God. You are that special to God. Jesus has been said to been brought to earth for many things, but allow me to tell you the simple truth. When God and the heavens conceived the character of Jesus, they were not thinking of the synagogue. They were not thinking of the Sanhedrin. They were not thinking of the priesthood. They were thinking of a sinner. Jesus was designed, he was engineered, he was architected only for a sinner. Jesus did not come to condemn the world, John 3, 17 says, but he came that he may save the world. So Jesus comes against your mistakes and errors, well knowing them that they occurred, but comes to take you up so that he can capture you back to regeneration of the original plan of God. What is man? Who are you in the eyes of God? You were wonderfully and fearfully made. This my soul knows so well. Therefore, I will praise him. When we have that understanding as I conclude, we then know that the testimonies you gave of our sister Nogwanda, the tributes that poured about her great accomplishments, the many things you were able to share with us about what she has done, it brings us to Matthew, which says the following. Jesus gave five talents to one servant, to another two, to another one. And when he came back after some time, he found that the one that had five had doubled them to ten. The one that had two had doubled them to four. And the one that had one actually buried the one that she had and kept it for the Lord without doing anything about it. And Jesus rebuked him and said, you wicked and lazy servant. Yet on those that he doubled, he said, well done, you faithful and good servant. I have no doubt in my mind that when Sis Nogwanda enters heaven, as I believe she is in the bosom of Abraham, the Lord Jesus will say himself to her, well done, you good and faithful servant. If you just cared to listen and paid attention to the many attributes that were given to her, to the many tributes, to the many testimonies, it shows you that God was at work through her. Even when her body did not allow, she continued to know she is carrying the purpose of God. And until her last breath, she must become a good servant. Talents, as you may well know, are supposed to be things, uh, treasures that measured between 28 and 36 kilograms by way of measure. It would be measures of gold, silver, or copper. In other words, these were precious stones that were tradable instruments. And when you were given five, two, or one, that was quite something to do. She knew, or at least this good servant knew how to invest them and double them. Sisnokwanda was given certain qualifications. She was given certain opportunities, but that was not enough. She doubled and tripled, if not quadrupled, many opportunities because she was a good and faithful servant. What about you and I? Can the Lord say, welcome, well done, good and faithful servant? I want to say to us today, 
even as it is the send off of our sister, we are grateful to God that without fear of contradiction, we are able to confirm, Sis Nogwanda, well done, good and faithful servant. Join me as we say this, Sis Nogwanda, well done, good and faithful servant. Because I believe we are echoing that which is being said by Jesus Christ the Lord in heaven. What shall it be for you? Because the time has come for us to be able to be reminded about the cruel death that either delivers a good and faithful servant or delivers a wicked and lazy servant. May the Lord bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. Shall we close our eyes to pray? Bow our heads. As we bow our heads to pray, we say this evening, or rather this afternoon, on this day of our sister Nogwanda's burial, on this send-off, Lord, may you remember me. May you be able to say, well done on my own day. And I know that in order for me to do that, I need Jesus Christ to regenerate my life, to direct it to the purpose of God, that when I die or he comes back soon, I may not be found wanting. Allow me to say, Someone today may very well take from the leaf of Sisnogwanda and say the faith you exercise through Jesus Christ is available still during this time of grace. Pastor, when you pray for the service, also include me in your prayer that the Lord may say one day, well done, you good and faithful servant. And if you are that person that says, include me in your prayer, just raise your hand where you're seated and then pull it down. Thank you for those hands I see. Thank you for those hands. I see the hands. God sees the hearts. God sees the hearts on this day. Yeah, on this day of Sisnokwanda, someone is coming unto the knowledge of Christ. Someone's life is being transformed like the metamorphosis I spoke about. Someone is getting a blessed promise of God in the name of Jesus. Allow me to see you one more time as I pray and close my eyes. Let me see your hands in the name of Jesus. I need to pray with you. There is divine power in this place. Just stand up where you are so I may pray with you. Receive this by the name of Jesus. Stand up without fear. You are wonderfully made. You are precious before the Son of God. Stand up. Don't be fearful. Don't be fearful. It's your day that the Lord has ordained. I thank God for these that have stood Allow me to say these words as you follow me, and we all help them. Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Change my life. Remove all sin from me. Remove all fear. Pull me through to your purpose of my life. Give me the ability to one day receive the honor of being called a good and faithful servant. I admit, I acknowledge that you were born by the Virgin Mary, died on the cross, raised after three days, and you are now seated on the right hand of God in the heavenly places. Cleanse me from all sins. Make me your very own. In the name of Jesus, I declare that I am now a born again. I'm a child of God. All things past are in the past. Everything is new waiting for me. In Jesus' name, amen. Let me make this prayer, Lord. Write them in the name of, on the book of life. Receive them and scribe them for the Lord has now done a new thing in their lives. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. I want to invite you to find a church that preaches the authentic gospel truth close to where you are. It does not matter which denomination. There's not one denomination that knows how to take anybody as a pass to heaven. Not even one. After all, in heaven there are no denominations. It's only Jesus Christ, the sacrificial lamb of God, 
who is our right pass to enter into his rest. So find a church that can be able to feed you and walk the journey with your faith. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. This concludes our message. I did know that there was a, a video clip that was outstanding. Um, if it is ready, just someone who needed to say a message shortly. Thereafter, it will be a vote of thanks, and then we will close. Over to the Master of Ceremonies after this. God bless you in the name of Jesus. My name is Maggie Karate Barajawa, one of my mother's friends from Uganda. I want to share something about my life with Nokwanda when she lived in Uganda for the last, she lived in Uganda for about 12, 13 years with her children, with her family. Before I begin my tribute, I want to share some words from the book of Isaiah. Isaiah 57, verses 1 and 2. I read, Good people pass away. The godly often die before their time, but no one seems to care or wonder why. No one seems to understand that God is protecting them from the evil to come. For those who follow godly paths will rest in peace when they die. That is my friend Nokwanda. She will rest in peace. Let me now go back to 2011. 2011, Nokwanda and I were sitting side by side in a women's leadership class. It was the first time I was seeing her. Um, at that time, she was not yet the MD of ESCOM, but she was the Chief Finance Officer of ESCOM. Oh, I forget. I think she was already MD. I, I, sorry, she was MD at that time. But she sat next to me, and during our coffee break, she began to speak to me about her father's love. She spoke so deeply. She spoke with such special love. And she told me she was journaling her experience. And I was tempted to ask her, when did your dad die? And then I realized she was talking about her father in heaven. She had such an intimate relationship with her father in heaven that she was talking about him and planning on writing a book. And that is when Nokwanda and I fell in love, so to speak. She was a woman right after God's own heart. From that day, most of the time we spent with Nokwanda was in prayer. She is the one woman who took me from strength to strength as far as my spiritual life was concerned. She taught me so many things. She shared of her life. She shared from the word of God. She shared from her experiences. She shared her office life. She shared her children's, her, her children's lives. We shared pretty much everything. Nokwanda became to me the big sister that I never had. She listened to she listened to my cries, she listened to my woes, she listened to everything I had to tell her. It didn't matter how much time I gave her, busy as she was, if I told her, Nokwanda, I need prayer. Oh, Nokwanda, I need to see you. Oh, Nokwanda, I'm under attack. She would immediately drop everything and we meet for prayer. So our scheduled prayer times began way back in 2011 when um, I was going through some difficulties and she said to me, Maggie, do not suffer. So Saturday mornings, <coughs> she cleared her Saturday mornings in her home. Uh, my son would drive me there. Um, we'd have breakfast, we'd have tea, and it was a time for prayer. So many Saturday mornings would see me driving to Bobolobi when she still stayed in Bobolobi for prayer. And boy, didn't we pray. 
we prayed long and we prayed over so many things. So after I got over the difficult patch, we didn't stop praying. <clears throat> We started to pray, and especially for the children. She had a heart for my boys. She'd actually see right through. Somebody, if one of them dropped me, she'd, she'd ask, what's the issue? Nokwanda was gentle. She was soft-spoken, and she was loving. She was always very warm. And I'd tell her whatever we had been going through. And she'd say, my sister, don't worry. I've also just seen the same. You know these boys? Boys will be boys, but let's continue to pray. My boys may not know how much time she travailed in prayer for them. Maybe even their successes today. Actually, not even maybe. I know for sure because God answers prayers. They are sitting on the back of Nokwanda's prayers. We are all sitting on the back of Nokwanda's prayers because she always told me, my sister, don't suffer. Don't suffer in silence. Come and we pray over it. Just the same way we prayed over her office issues, especially office issues, and her children, is the same way we prayed over mine. So that was no kwanda. And then I introduced her to my friends, and she was such a darling. We started to pray with um, two other friends, Beat Bisangwa, Betty Pianima, regularly on Tuesdays. Tuesday mornings before she drives to, to Jinja, we would be together in prayer. We prayed for at least an hour. And she was a kind of person who always says, let's not start with chit chat. Let's start with prayer. Let's put our issues before God. Let's praise him. Let's extol his name together. That was my Nokwanda. And so we prayed until she left Uganda. But even when she left Uganda, I want to tell you my people, that we were never apart with Nokwanda for more than two weeks at a time. I knew where she was, she knew where I was. Even when she was in Ivory Coast, Ghana, Sierra Leone, there was a time she sent me a message, Banjul, she was really uh, having the time of her life. Just last year, in, in the Gambia, then in Mombasa, then in Zambia, we were never apart for more than two weeks. Such was Nokwanda's love for God, that even when we were apart physically, we set up a scheduled time, Tuesday evenings, between six and eight, we prayed. It didn't matter where she was, it didn't matter where I was, it didn't matter whether she was sick, it just did not matter, we prayed. And so, one day Nokwanda looks at me and says, but my sister, you have come such a long way, I cannot even recognize you your knowledge of the Bible, your knowledge of the word, your depth of prayers. She couldn't recognize me, but I'd come that far because of who she was to me. Nokwanda was so kind. We shared money. I mean, I, you can't say that it was flowing from me to her. It was really flowing from her to me. Not that I asked for it, because I want to give you some examples. Um, our children were in the same schools, in, the, in boarding school in Kenya. And many times I wouldn't be able to go and visit my son. But Nokwanda would be able to do that. And every time she went, she had a package for my son. And she would send her daughter, Mohadi, please take this for Paul. Whenever she went, there was something in her her goodies for Paul. The very last year, Paul was in school. I remember finances were not so easy. Um, sometimes, um, you know, we get into those places. And I really didn't know how my son was going to come home. But Auntie Nokwanda visited school three weeks to the end of term and just goes into her handbag. I don't even know if she counted that money, but she took out dollars and put them in my son's hands. I hadn't asked her for money, my son didn't ask her for money. At least I trust him when he told me I didn't ask her for money. And she put money in his hands. 
A week to the end of term, I, I, I call and I say, Paul, I'm not yet able, I've not yet found a way for you to come home. He says, Mom, don't worry. I've bought an air ticket because Auntie Nokwanda gave me money. She gave me pocket money, but it was enough for me to buy a ticket. So I bought a ticket to come home. I, and Nokwanda, you can never thank her. She says, ah, Mukwano, you know, just leave it at that. And so Nokwanda and I developed such a strong bond. She was my sister. She knew how I felt. She knew what I needed. I didn't have to say it. She knew it. I didn't have to finish her thought. She knew it. Nokwanda was a leader. Nokwanda was a leader. As a woman leader, she contributed a lot to women in leadership in Uganda. And that is actually where we started, in a leadership class. She was a model. She was a role model. The kind of woman leader you'd want to be. She didn't wear her authority or her power on her shoulders, or on, her, on her lapels. She didn't. It took you a while to actually know that this was the MD of ESCOM, because she just didn't carry that power around her. She preferred to come down to our levels, all of us, wherever we were, and be like one of us. I actually remember one of my sons, um, we're going to her place, and, um, and she comes out, she makes us tea, she makes us breakfast. She, she never sent for servants if she had guests, you know, bring me this, bring me that. She got up and did it herself. So one of my boys asked me, but mommy, are you sure? You, did you say that your friend is the MD of this company? I said, yes. Then I said, yeah, some people prefer to live a simple and humble life, but a very meaningful life. And so because of who she was, I learned so much from Nokwanda. We ate many meals at her home, cooked by herself, cooked by her girls, and her girls could cook. But the thing about the meals is this. When she invited you in her space, she wasn't inviting you to actually um, take stock of what material things there were in her house or anything like that. It was always about the bond that you shared. And that is why she made sure that the meals were cooked by the family and not by house help or by chefs. She's one person who could use a driver anywhere, any day, any time, and all the time. But she didn't. She preferred to drive herself while she's praying. She preferred to do her own thing rather than to get people to wait upon her hand and foot. That was Nokwanda. Nokwanda was loved by many Ugandans. I was speaking to her pastor just yesterday from the church where she went. And he just kept on, he, he's been traveling, he came back from Japan, he heard the message and so yesterday we got to speak. And he kept on saying that, but Maggie, I can't get over this. I can't get over this woman here today, gone tomorrow, gone so soon. She was so young. She was still so useful. She touched so many lives in the church. She was a pillar in that church. And she took me to that church as well in Intinda, where she prayed. And that's where she preferred to pray. Nokwanda passed all the uh, brick, brick, <clears throat> all the brick churches with big mahogany doors. She passed all of them and found a church somewhere in Intinda, Chigowa, where she nested. She found her place amongst those people. They used to speak Luganda, but that was fine. That's where she found her home. And that is where she made her friends, and that's where she spread her love. That was Nokwanda. No quander amongst her corporate friends will be missed greatly in Uganda. No quander touched many lives. She was someone to look up to. She was a real role model. Where she has gone, 
we may not go. But her spirit lives on amongst us. It lives on especially in the bond that we share, those of us who are gathered here to bid her farewell, those of us who are gathered here to read her tributes and to share her tribute. It was very gratifying when, um, I think two days after she'd passed, and I arrived at her home to find her daughters and her sisters. It was very gratifying the way I was received. Yes, I knew Siwe, I knew the girls. We were together just the other day, they cooked for us um, a meal. But to be received the way Nokwanda would have received me, with such warmth, with such love, is very gratifying. The meals that have been, that have been shared in, this, in Nokwanda's home in the past few days since she passed are fit for a king. They are made by her daughters because she has taught them well. I just want the whole world to know that Nokwanda's children have represented her very well. They have represented my friend very well. With those few words, I want to bid my friend farewell, but I know we shall meet in heaven. As we, as we come to the close, let us welcome Mzwandile Nzangane to come and do a vote of thanks. Immediately after him, we are going to invite Pastor Dr. Zamkaka who will give us procession order announcement after he has closed. So he'll close the session and give us procession order. Shall we welcome Mzwandi Lenzangane? Wakazu Luange Nayami Liwa Kusenti Send easy. Apostle, Dr. Ganesha, and all the pastors that are here of the Assemblies of God. I'm here to do a little thing, very little and very short. It's just to say thank you to everyone who is here, who has left whatever he or she had planned months ago to go and do today to leave it there and pack it until after the funeral of Nokwanda. The family is grateful for that. And uh, ever since Nokwanda fell, a lot of people have gone through the, the house doors many a times a day, and even at night. They were doing a lot of work that was preparing the family for today and also making preparations and arrangements for the funeral today. Uh, I'm not going to be long because of time. I am going to thank everybody who was involved in Gwanda's life in their language. They, we, we say Ngosi, we say thank you, we say merci, we say asante, we say wibale, and natotela. And also pass 
a word of gratitude to the funeral parlor or funeral home that arranged this funeral. 21st century. They helped us a lot, and I'm sure they will do that to other families as well who find themselves in the, situ themselves in the situation we were in or we are still in until we bear in Uganda today. We are thankful to everyone. Thank you. so much because of time I greet all the saints in the name of Jesus hallelujah greeting the family of mama mungeni no tata mungeni eh abafundisi o mama no put no siso tata everyone present in the name of Jesus amen we are closing now hallelujah and we thank God for the word today that has spoken to us you are fearfully and wonderfully made you know well done good servant so let's go with those words that you are fearful. Whatever challenge that you meet as a family, know that you are greater, greater is he that is in you than the one is in the world. Hallelujah. So now, family and kumbuz guti, everybody after the burial, we must come back here for refreshments. And also it is requested that uh, all those who are here must be out of the house. When immediately we go out, all of us must go, must go out so that they can prepare the place, you know, so that when we come back, hallelujah. So the way we are going to now, as we are going to close the service, because I want immediately we close, we just do as then we are requested. So we are going to all of us come and walk through here. So they are requesting that we walk through the stage and then we, we go out. And when we are outside, then the hess will go first, followed by the family, and then the pastors are requested to follow, you know, after the family because I think there's a video that they want to take, you know, with the hess. So, and then everyone then will follow after that. And then we are going to close here by prayer. Uh, can we stand then as we close by prayer in Jesus' name? Let's close. Father, you are excellent. You are powerful. You are glorious. In you we live. In you we move. In you we exist. Thank you so much today, Heavenly Father, to give us an opportunity, Lord Heavenly Father, to enjoy, Lord Heavenly Father, the anointing of your daughter in the name of Jesus. Thank you so much, Lord, to give us an opportunity to celebrate a life that is well lived in the name of Jesus. Lord, she has been described as a prayer warrior, as a faithful servant of the Lord, as a giver. You have been as a trustworthy person, as a trailblazer. We pray that these attributes may not end with her. But Heavenly Father, whoever has listened and be touched by her, Lord Heavenly Father, may continue the legacy in the name of Jesus. We thank you so much even for your word that you have spoken to us today to strengthen us, to strengthen the family, that we were made in a special way in the name of Jesus. Bless the servant of the Lord that you have used so mightly. Continue to give him the revelations in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. We thank you so much. Bless even the pastors that left everything just to be here. Everybody that Lord Heavenly Father left everything today to come and mourn together and celebrate with the family. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth. As we are living right now, Heavenly Father, to the graveyard to go and plant the body of your servant. Lord, we pray that you may lead us on the way. We stop any traffic that may be a disturbance in the name of Jesus.
Jesus. And we declare healing to everybody in this place. And we give all the glory and the honor that it is done in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. And also be with the family. Heavenly Father, be the spirit of comfort. Be a director. Be a helper. Be a standby in the name of Jesus. We thank you that it is done in Jesus' name. And may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth be with us now and forevermore in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. So we are going to go, all of us, we are going to sing softly. You know, we are going to sing softly. You know, and the Bible says, he who rose from the dead is coming back from us. Mna diku uvuka lo ute wafa ekolwa uya kupila na pagade. Bela keni zebotata nistatele ibogisi. I am the life and the resurrection. He who believes in the in Christ, even though he dies, he shall rise again. Bela ba fundi si si kokeleni song as we go. I am the resurrection. I am the life. He who dies in the Lord shall rise again. resurrection. I am the life. He who dies in the Lord, you must die in the Lord. Will rise again in the name of Jesus. Will rise again. There is resurrection in Christ. Our life is in Christ. Jesus says, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. He who dies in the Lord shall rise again. I am the resurrection, I am the life, I am the truth. He who dies in the Lord shall rise again. There is a resurrection of the dead. But those who die in the Lord shall rise again. Nandi kuku vuka. Nandi kuku vuka. Lo ute wafa efela kumi nkosi. Ya kupinda. Avuke wako. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. He who dies in the Lord shall have eternal life. Thank you. the life, the truth, the way he who dies in the Lord shall rise again. As two men song, as two men sing, as what you
sing together. Make it your prayer.
let it be your prayer.